Good morning, this is the News Wire. I'm Lael Obaga. Hundreds of families in Nairobi and Machakas counties spent the night in the cold following overnight rains that caused flooding across the city and in the Siokimau area. A spot check revealed flooded roads, marooned homes and collapsed buildings as a result of Gong River and Nati River breaking their banks. The Red Cross has put the number of those affected by floods in the two counties at over 6,800 with about 250 50 families being displaced by the floods. Yeye rakati mimi nimelala tulikuwa na mtoto kwa nyumba mama mama bibi yangu alikuwa hapa nje alikuwa anafanya usafi in that process nikasikia kaniita toka toka nyumba inaanguka. Mimi nikatoka kwa kitanda kapepa mtoto wangu nikamweka kando tukatoka nje tukatoroka. Mimi nilikuja tu asubuhi nikakuta nyumba imeangukiwa. Bahati mzuri siku kuepo. Kama ningelikuepo sasa saa hii ningelikuwa maiti. Kwa hivyo ni vizuri jambo kama hili liketokea isukuliwe hatua ya dharura wale ambao wanaishi pembezoni mwa mto wanafaa kujitahadharisha ya kwamba kipindi cha mvua kinapofika ikiwa huko kabisa pembezoni mwa mto inafaa uanze kujiondoa mapema Despite the Met Department announcing that heavy rains will continue in various parts of the country, residents of flood-affected areas have blamed their leaders for failing to put in place appropriate strategies to avert flood-related losses Tunge homba kama iko uwezekano serikali ile mchanga ilimwaga pale mbele ya daraja hiyo mchanga ifajiriwe yote wenye wamejenga hapo watafutiwe mahali pengine wanayetajenga juu ni kwa maoni yangu naona hiyo mchanga ndio inasababisha hii mambo yote parapa ile imefurika kama mnavyoona hapa kumetea maji tumejaribu kuita chief wa hii area lakini ya megno sasa karabati imewekwa lakini unapata mtu ana block side yake sasa sijui MPY yeri ama mwenye anafaa kusimamia ama watu wa neema wakuja watusaidie kwa sababu hata imekuwa unhygienic kwa sababu kama hii ni choo imejaa na maji kitoka is very unhygienic kupitia kwa hiyo maji and another tragedy involving the health sector the Kenya medical practitioners pharmacists and dentists union have criticized the government for what they term as a hardline stunts on the issue of compensation for medical interns and self-sponsored registrars stipend KMPDU secretary general Davji Atela accused the government of coming to the negotiating table with insincere intentions and failing to march the goodwill shown by the medics chaired by the head of public service Felix Koske between the unions and the two levels of government is yet to agree on the return to work formula meanwhile the Kenya Union of Clinical Officers the Kenya National Union of Medical Laboratory Officers and KMPDU will this morning hold a meeting with the clergy the clergy team will be led by Archbishop Olesa Pete and Bishop Anthony Muheri with the aim of pleading with the health workers to call off their strike which has affected services for for more than a month now and the University of Nairobi students have now issued a 48 hour notice to their management over the institute's unconducive learning environment speaking in a press conference the student leadership has raised concern over the unbearable state of their campus hosp- hostels demanding that they be renovated immediately as the government campus i'm here to deeply express my concern and my disappointment by the appalling conditions of the students hostels by the university of nairobi management the current set of these facilities are not com- compelling to the well-being and the safety of students but they also not reflect the, the reflect the poor conditions of the institutions management it's very unacceptable to the students being subject to the filthy and sanitary living conditions which includes san- uh, inadequate sanitation fewer hygiene standards and dilapidated infrastructure the leadership says that the rainy season has made the condition even worse as some of the roofs leak and the sewer lines get blocked uh, the students are experiencing a very great problem in terms of uh, 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 the drainage conditions uh, their rooms are leaking from the roofs and we find a lot of flooded rooms around the school we are training doctors to treat Uh, to treat to treat patients we are, uh, we are we are we are training architects to go out there and design our environment we are not training deep sea divers that's the news wire i'm la ubaga
102.5 Spice FM Kisumu The following takes place from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. every weekday on Spice FM It's critical that people pay taxes but then taxation has to have a limit when you start overtaxing people beyond certain limit then this now we call robbery, robbery and violence we are all struggling, but we don't show. If you're not doing well, shame on you. But you have to say, I'm broke and I'm struggling. <laughs> we are not okay until everybody is it's okay. okay. We are pretending to have political parties. Why don't we just be honest? And we say, these are the Luhias, these are the Kambas, these are the Kikuyus, and we are find ourselves in Kenya. You know, with, with politics and leadership, no matter what you do, <laughs> there will always be a complaint. <laughs> there will always be the assumption that you're either stealing or you're not doing things right. As a dear, don't fear. If you know you're doing the right thing, you've thought about it, you've got an expert advice, do it, then understand later. This country, we don't need prayers. Prayers mm. is between you and God. Good governance and thinkers who care about the country and not their stomach. Yes. That's what we need. The Situation Room. Kenya's biggest conversation. Thank you very much, Eric, and it's good to be at the Situation Room. Always a pleasure coming here. This is the most challenging uh, interview panel in Kenya. You guys are very well informed, and as you can see, Charles, today, very philosophical. <laughs> <laughs> To be poor in this country is the greatest sin you can commit, not just from a legal perspective, but from life generally. Yeah. It, it, it is very, very skewed. We've just heard uh, on the floor of parliament, just most recently, a leader within the ODM saying that Sisi Nimonde is a baba. Yeah. Which means that you're willing to be milked dry. <laughs> you cannot force me to believe. I'll give away. If it's a land that I'm told to return to you, I will. Okay? Because the court has said so. But I'll continue saying, oh, what to a many Russia. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that I'm doing. <laughs> the situation will can Good morning and I love your show. Thank you. Thank you. Having come from Bakikuyu radio background, I migrated to Spice hmm. <laughs> because of the content. I was born in a slum, but somehow I got a break in life. So sometimes when you see the sweating coming out because of the passion and whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> Behind the noise, there are people. And we share the same umbilical cord. It shouldn't be like that. I am so disappointed. We used to tell Honda uh, Baraila Molotinga that he's doing police of conmanship. And even President Uhuru Kenyatta, Sirikali, he is going to conmanship here. You cannot promise people that you reduce tax, then you double. In politics, mm. there is uh, the issue of trust. Mm. For you to turn around and then stab the same people who gave you that trust, there is no other level of dishonesty. The Situation Room, Kenya's biggest conversation. It is one of the hottest show that we can ever miss in the morning and it's a show that really gives a real situation in the situation room. Pleasure to be here. Mm. Thank you guys so much. Do that. Nice meeting you. Yeah. You've been beautiful in uh, person more than in yeah. photos. Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> Corrupter is like pregnancy, you cannot hide it. You know, people are hiding here and there, you know, but after two, three months, five months, now you see. Oh. So that is why the character. attitude that you are showing us, <laughs> you are pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> like what my grandmother would say mm. cannot pickpocket a naked man <laughs> how's that it's communal isn't it <laughs> no comment <laughs> good morning and the welcome situation. to monday morning okay so the rains have been coming down and so a lot is happening on these streets um in the capital and around the country so the first thing we're going to get off is be extremely careful don't attempt to get into pools of water for which you do not know the depth okay so uh, a lot of flooding taking place lower visibility because of the heavy rains and so that means that a lot of roads are flooded uh, coming into the morning um, it really doesn't matter where you are in Nairobi you're going to experience this and also parts of the country so we're gonna hear a shout out from you in terms of that let us know what's going on where you are in terms of traffic that hasn't really built up right yet uh, some movement coming in towards the Pangani underpass um, and that's all coming in off the thicker super highway. But apart from that, not just yet. But we're going to keep an eye on things as we get into Monday. We'll talk on Spice FMK Eonex hashtag the Situation Room.
This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is The Situation Room. The only way to start your day. We're getting into the last week of the fourth month of the year. Wow, just like that. Snap, snap, and go. What's been happening? The rain's been coming down. It was a weekend of wetness. How about that for W's this morning? Um, uh, getting into Monday morning, and here we are. Good morning all the same. How are you doing? Welcome to Kenya's Biggest Conversation. It starts now at 11 minutes after 6 o'clock. Hoping that you're getting into the week with us and getting in well. How are you doing? We have some conversations lined up today in terms of what we'll be discussing before we say hello to everybody. Um, in terms of what's going on uh, here and around the country. And we'll let you know what some of those are. Okay, so roundabout uh, coming off at uh, 7 o'clock um, this morning. We'll be having a conversation, <coughs> excuse me, um, about uh, the role of the. <coughs> uh, so, very many things happen legally in the country, right? In order for you to get legal representation, most times you're going to have to pay for it. Um, advancing access to justice for marginalized and vulnerable persons and the national legal aid service um, will be with us here this morning in the person of Caleb Kisuya and William Musio Kikimandi and we'll be discussing how this can actually help to make sure that there's proper access to justice around the country so it's a free service it's funded um, but let's see what that conversation will carry for us as we get through it at 8 a.m. the ambassador of the kingdom of Belgium to Kenya, His Excellency Ambassador Peter Maddens will be with us at 8. We'll be talking about the Net Zero Embassy, the journey towards becoming carbon neutral. Carbon has been a word that has been thrown around ever since, you know, um, we started going in-depth into the climate uh, conversation. And we'll be looking at that this morning and finding out, okay, so what does this all mean? And what does it all portend for folks who are getting into that carbon conversation? Finally, at 9 a.m., um, Haran Malim Hassan, who is the Executive Director of the National Council for Persons with Disabilities, will be with us and will be talking about ensuring inclusion of persons with disabilities in employment and social places. It's a big deal. It always has been one. How are we going to ensure that that actually happens? Those are the conversations we'll be having from 7 to 8 to 9 o'clock this morning. And thank you already for being part of that with us today. Good morning, Eric Latif. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. How about you? I'm well, thank you. Uh -huh. mm. Hey, the rain. Did the thing. Where? Mm. Hey, 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 hey. So the other man was saying, yeah, yeah, it's going to rain, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it has happened. Mm. Yeah? Proper heavy rain. Heavy, heavy, heavy. Sheesh. City. Yes? How did you encounter it? <laughs> what? Hmm? You know, mm. I started encountering it on Thursday. Mm -hmm. By jams. You know this one where there is no movement. Mm. Uh, Not at Kidogo. Uh, none. Zero. So we just say, okay, uh, we are here for the long haul. So mm. let's just chit chat and see how it goes. What? But um, we had spoken of it and said, the rains are all good and well, but the preparedness because of what the rain brings with it mm. flooded streets stagnant water disease inconveniences mm. the destruction of property yeah. yeah because with all these buildings coming up one of the things that certainly did happen mm. was many passageways that water ordinarily had have yeah. been blocked yeah 
there were streets I was passing on my way home mm. where you found people walking. It was now drizzling. Mm. They had removed shoes and they were carrying things on their head. And the reason was because the water was up to close to their knee. Mm. What? Yes. So you had to drive very, very slowly to make sure you don't splash water on anybody. Mm. Yes. It's, it's, it's really been heavy. So the weatherman has been saying, yeah, yeah, it's going to rain. But I still have an issue with the weatherman. The weatherman should be able to tell us, on this day, Friday, the rain is going to be very heavy from 2 p.m. So people just plan. If you don't need to be out, you just know, okay, it's going to be raining. So let me restrict my movement. Yes. Now, you surely. Uh, it is going to rain in Nairobi. No, Nairobi is a rather big place. Huh? <laughs> Uh, between now and June. It's, yeah. Or sometimes you look at it and say, it is raining now. You think, okay. It's raining now. He's not raining here. Yet, but raining the forecast somewhere. does actually mean beforehand. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so, um, in this um, prediction, weather thing, Majeg, is supposed to be scientific. Mm. So, a little more clarity would be useful. Mm. Those using the expressway. Mm. Mm -hmm. Avoid blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. This particular place, because there's blah, 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 blah. Yeah, mm. but the, you know this 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 round is particularly disturbing, guys, mm. because we're not even get we're not even at the peak of what the rain is going to look like. Uh, another week of very very heavy rains going into the first week of May, um, and already the destruction is like this. Uh, I don't know, and we're seeing then also destruction in places that we have not seen before with heavy mm. rains of this nature. So. It doesn't look good. It doesn't. It doesn't. We are live streaming the show on YouTube and Facebook. Everybody who's online, say hello. We'll be saying hello to you shortly after Andu gives us the weather forecast. Tell us, it's going to be raining today. <laughs> <laughs> south of Nairobi, east of the mountain, on the wetlands and westlands, your southlands of your of the coastal region, and so on and so forth. Don't forget the westerly winds. Huh? I will not forget. <laughs> The weather with spice. Uh, morning in Nairobi. Drizzle in some parts of the city. 15 degrees. We'll see highs of 25. 26 will be the high in a mostly cloudy Nakuru. Rain's also coming down and it's raining as well in Yeria at 16 with highs of 26. Yes, uh, clear but drizzly morning in Eldoret. Highs of 25 and lows of 14. We're looking into a clear Mombasa at 25 with highs of 31 while Malindi is cloudy at 25. It'll go to highs of 31. Kisumu is cloudy into rains this morning with highs of 29 and lows of 20. While into Kakamega, it's partly cloudy at 19. We'll see highs of 30 and lows of 18. Clear for now in Kampala with highs of 28 and lows of 20. While in Dar es Salaam, cloudy at 25 with highs of 30. It is uh, 17 and mostly cloudy in Johannesburg with highs of 27 and into Mogadishu. It's sunny at 25 with highs of 32. Addis Ababa at 14 is sunny, highs of 24. And we'll see highs of 34 in a mostly cloudy Lagos at 26. Light rain showers at 25 in Kinshasa with highs of 34 and Monday afternoon is sunny in Beijing at 20 we'll see highs of 26 4 degrees and partly cloudy in Paris with highs of 11 and lows of 2 it's cloudy at 6 degrees in London with highs of 10 and Sunday night in New York is 8 degrees and clear coming into Monday we'll see highs of 13 and lows of 5 Intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4. Rain expected today and tomorrow in Dubai. Yes, that's another country. Uh, the UAE is actually taking quite a hit. People are marooned. People cannot leave. Um, the floods are coming down. It's, it doesn't look good at all. Um, Robert Tabogo says good morning from Mombasa. Sir George Gashoidi says good morning into Edna, Charlotte, uh -huh, Charlotte, mm. CT and Eric. How was your weekend? Well, you know, we're here. Heart still beating and all those good things. Looking forward to a great show. Desmond O.T. says good morning, princess. Good morning. And mm. princes, where they are. CT, mbona hukufika siaya jana ni kupe rich. Fish. Fish, all right. Mbona? Mm. Bon. Yeah. Is that Mombalizi? 
uzuri wa mtandao yao unaweza kuomboleza mtu kwa mbali kuomboleza mbali don't yes. know what is that wretch don't know what is that <laughs> Bembeleza Bali Rich. Bembeleza. Una Bembeleza Rich? No. Bembeleza na kuombeleza kuna tofauti. Bembeleza Rich. Bembeleza is tougher than please. Okay. If you may. Ombeleza? Commiserate. Ah. Oh, to commiserate with the fish. No, no, no. With I get it. I know. I'm just being silly. <clears throat> you forgot gotten the reason why Desmond he says, good morning as well to Edna. Felix Etiang says, the second best bench after the Court of Appeal bench of three judges. As an advocate, this is where I begin my day. I take care. <sighs> James Mwangi says, good morning. Mm -hmm. Alex is here. He says, good congratulations, Gorma, here. Okay, they did the thing. James Mukabana says, good morning, Spice. Tuned in from Gong. Looking forward to today's conversation. Zeke says, happy, good, okay, slow down and do. Good morning and happy new week to you too. Robinson Kisero is tuned in from Hong Kong and says, surprised with CT's rank, sorry, surprised with CS ranking placing, <laughs> you know, S and T follow each other in the alphabet, so you know, I was just, you know, doing thing. Okay. Um, placing the CS interior and agriculture positions one and two. Well, are we talking about from the bottom or the top? Let's figure that out. Uh -huh. Respectively, yet the banditry and fertilizer issues are hot potatoes on the lips. Uh, indeed. Good morning, kings and queens. Kitengela Iko Lok, says Ricardo. Anne Gore says, Chamge, my beautiful people. Greetings from the beautiful hills of Saboti Transoya Kitale. Now a sana. Good mm. morning, Anne Gore. Hello, Princess Ndu. Thank you very much. CT and Eric, a politician can never be a leader. A politician only knows how to poly trick. A politician tells a lie until found out it's a lie or until it's believed as the truth. Took a heavy uh, Onganya Malala says, good morning, Eric Ndu, City, Edna and Charlotte. You're doing a great job. Kindly invite someone to talk about flooding in Nairobi. <laughs> I know, my dear. Mm. Alex Mnai says, spice by the spices on spice. Good morning. Joffrey Magaka Mogaka says, good morning, Ndu, City, Eric Nyaboke. It's another week. We thank God this far. Yes, we do. Nyaboke Apewe, hug moto nilishampe. Stella S. says, much love and greetings from Texas. Happy Monday, gents and lady. Good morning, everybody. Have a blessed day. James Kamau says, good morning, the Situation Room. Getting you loud and clear from Forney, Texas in the USA. Chris Maura says, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, awesome trio in the Situation Room. That's one Mike. Laban Misiani says, good morning. Eh, many people are here today. Yuengi. Anthony Mutunga. Hi, Quest is also here as Ken. Um... Anne says it's raining. And Agola has said a prayer for us this morning. and said, this is the day the Lord has made and will rejoice and be glad in it. Indeed. Condolences at the demise of Michael O'Year. Yes, mm. very, very, very sad. Um, good morning. Um, nice mid-morning here in Harbin in China. Mm -hmm. Chiguan is here. Georgia Koth is tuned in. We see you. Joseph Kimonge, Ken Smart. I want to say all of your names so you know that I see you. John Buru, Ado Ali, Wilfredo Diambo says good morning. Kip Koech Ezra, Grace Zawadi, Anthony Kamau, and many, many more. Karibuni Sana, thanks for joining us this morning. Welcome, everybody. City, mm -hmm. a brand new week, a brand new set of proverbs. Yes, a brand new country. Mm -hmm. Congo Brazzaville. Allah. You know, the thing that I couldn't resist eh. when I was looking through the proverbs, eh. they stated the proverbs in their language. It's called Lingala, uh -huh. yeah, believe it or not. Um, the three languages that are spoken and considered to be official languages mm. there's of course french uh -huh. and then there's uh lingala uh -huh. and then there's kitumba okay okay so as i said that the proverb was first stated in lingala and then in english uh -huh. i thought it was only fair that i also present it in the same manner but of right. course yeah. of course yeah. yes yes there was no now, other way by the way i did not know certain things were going to happen mm. when i chose this proverb for example for example <laughs> mm? Bula Ebangaka Mokonzite Bula Ebaka Ebangaka Mokonzite Now that one <laughs> <laughs> uh, I figured that is what we are going to start with this one here. Uh -huh. The rain does not fear the authority of a king. Oh hold on a minute. You <laughs> did not <laughs> Really? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bula Ekongata Eba, eba, ngaka, mokonzite. 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 Yes. yes. Okay. The rain does not fear the authority of a king. Mm. Very good. 
Okay. Need we say more? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Ruto promises thorough probe to allay suspicion. The president pledges to make public the investigation report as the new leaders pile pressure for answers on the death of General Ogola and others in a country with unresolved high-profile murders. Mm. That's on the front page of the Standard today. Of course, we're seeing pictures of um, the final internment of um, General Francis Ogola that took place yesterday in Sierra County. Um, President William Ruto at the burial of General Francis Omondi Ogola in Ngia Village, Sierra mm. Nia village, yes. uh, uh, Sierra County yesterday. It was uh, very interesting to watch and very many things were said. At the end of the day, the man has rested. Kenya Defense Forces pay their last respect. <coughs> and it was very interesting yesterday um, mm. and the day before that to see that um, in a cohort of men and women who usually are said to not show emotion, there was a lot of emotion from the forces mm. uh, that was shown um, yesterday only give rise to uh, the thought that this man touched their lives and their um, section or their sector quite heavily. Yes. Page two, three, that's covered in the standard as well with pictures from this final salute, tears, pain and heartbreak as Ogola is buried. And there's a headline there that Uhuru and Raila skip Ogola burial in Siaya. Was it for reason? Of course, speculation has begun. Boma's intrigues creep into a Gola burial, that notwithstanding. Destruction, injuries as heavy rains pound. This is another headline. It's mm. into the papers um, because, of course, others had taken up the front pages. Machakos County, Siokimao, heavily hit by this heavy rain. Is it a drainage issue? Or is there just too much rain, too much water for the areas where the buildings have come up? Both. What is the question? Mm. Rather, what's the answer? It's both. Final send-off is on the front page of the nation as well today. Fair thee well, General. Chief of Defense Forces Francis Ogola was yesterday laid to rest amid calls for a speedy and thorough probe into the cause of the helicopter crash that killed Kenya's foremost military officer. The country's first four-star general to die in office, who was mourned as a gallant general, humble and ethical man. It's carried on two, three, four and five of the nation. Kenyans rule in London streets. Alexander Munyao won the men's 42-kilometer race in London. Woo! Um, also, looking at other stories, making the back page, um, Perez lays down the marker with record-breaking run in London. Perez, Chepchir, Cheer and surprise package Alexander Mutiso Munyao have consolidated their places in Kenya's marathon team for the Olympic Games with victories in the London Marathon. So it Imagine. Was Kenya won one on the podium. It was a good thing to see. Hey. Um, some of the headlines that we're looking at. The wrath of Mother Nature also carried in the nation today. Death and ruin. The script plays on. It doesn't matter where in the country you look. The rain, Mother Nature, is fighting. It's just back. fighting in this. I tell you what's in the business daily. Mm. Dollar rally drives shilling to five-day weakening streak. Dollar rally drives shilling. How many double L's are in this sentence? Dollar rally drives shilling to five-day weakening streak. <laughs> Every word there has an L to Imagine. And double-doubles. A resurgent U.S. dollar amidst heightened geopolitical risks and fading hopes of multiple interest rate cuts, but the U.S. Fed have reserved, have reversed a major rally of the Kenya shilling in what has seen the local unit begin to weaken. <sighs> Data from the CBK shows that one dollar was exchanging for 131 shillings by the end of last week, representing a fifth straight day of weakening for the local unit since April 11th, when the official exchange rate was at 130. Hiya. Mm. On Friday, commercial banks were quoting 137. Ha, ha. Um, and then this story also goes on, on to page two of the Business Daily, where they have spoken to three people. One of them is James Mwangi, the equity bank boss. He says, the shilling has found its value in the marketplace. Excuse me. Bless, Bless you. you. Asande. Tijui mm imetoka -hmm. wapi? <laughs> 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 the 
The shilling has found its value in the marketplace. I believe the price we are seeing in the market is the market value. But remember, the shilling is dependent on the supply and demand of dollars and the demand for imported goods by Kenyans. Those two factors will determine the direction the shilling takes. It's a question of whether we will develop an appetite for imported goods and exert pressure through the demand of dollars. Ultimately, it's not the trend, but the equilibrium point, which is determined by market forces. Uh, ah, yeah. two forces. John Gashora is the MD of NCBA group and is also the chairman of the Kenya Bankers Association. This one you may understand. That already, what you've just read, mm. I understand. It's hard to say because the fundamentals are not explaining the performance of the shilling. Obviously, there's a good explanation in that we got quite a significant amount of dollars coming. That can only go so far, however, because of the expectation that the shilling will get stronger, the demand for dollars has gone down. It's not necessarily that we have seen more supply. I think the demand will come back because people will need to trade. Very soon they'll come back for more and we'll see the shilling going back to its true value. Have you understood that one? True value. Good. We, all of them, we're asking value, stability, mm -hmm. equilibrium. Now, listen to the governor of the central bank, Dr. Kamau Thuge. There was a time when we thought the exchange rate was overvalued and we could see the current account widening. But then there was an overreaction and we got to a situation where the shilling exchange rate was undervalued. We'll just allow the exchange rate to find its true level and really just intervene when there is excessive volatility. I can't give a particular level of where the rate settles, but we'll allow demand and supply of foreign exchange to determine that level. Have you understood the level of the conversation we're having? <coughs> or is it too high a level for you to get? The shilling has a level, and when the dollar comes to the country, mm -hmm. the shilling also rallies against the dollar. Mm -hmm. Now the dollar has risen and is rallying against the shilling, and the shilling will remain the shilling. So what we will do, we will allow the shilling to continue being the shilling, mm -hmm. and when the shilling has become the shilling, then we will see. We will monitor excess volatility, mm -hmm. and then we will find its equilibrium. Yes. Market At right forces. Level. At the right level. That's mm -hmm. market forces mm -hmm. being allowed to do value. what market forces do. But on the other hand, mm -hmm. we also will keep a keen eye on it, and we will do the needful when it's necessary. <laughs> yes. Very good. You got it. Exactly what I wanted to say. Yep. That's what you're is yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. There's so. a company called Savannah Cement. Now there have been some ownership battles at Savannah Cement. Fresh battle for control rocks the troubled cement maker. A fresh row has erupted over the control of the troubled Savannah Cement administration process with the government challenging the validity of the current caretaker amid an 18 billion shilling exposure for creditors. Mark Gakuru is the official receiver in the office of the Attorney General. And he says Peter Kahi, who took over as Savannah Cement's administrator in 2023, is in office illegally. Mr. Kahi is a partner at PKF. Okay. The governor, government is saying this guy should not be here. Kahi is saying, we are <laughs> <laughs> How long has he been there? Kahi. Mm. Since last year. And they are realizing <laughs> now. <laughs> Kahi said, Watch out. Nenny na mimi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when? Ticker headlines. Power imports hit all time high in three months to March. Cooperative Bank Wealth Management Assets hit 218 billion shillings. And Nairobi home prices deep as costly loans hurt demand. Wanamuga, hmm? you have the star. I do. Please give us the headline in the star. I do. I mm -hmm. do. I do. I do. I do. Top right hand corner until green. All right. Champion. 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 Perez Chirchir sets new world record at London Marathon. Is this not a wonderful thing? Ah, very wonderful. Hmm? The story is on page 29. JKU at student murder. Police release pictures to help capture suspects. If you look at page three, mm. remember the young lady Waini, mm. whose dismembered body was found oh. in the black bags in Roysam West State. Oh my yeah. God! Yeah. Well, there's a picture here picturing a, a certain person with a white cap, glasses, and they said they've released images of this particular individual. Mm. Okay. That is in the in the in the hope that when with, the, with this picture mm. the public may be able to help identify if they see this person right mm. general ogola helicopter crash report we made public says president william ruto okay 
Tension as IBC rejects key NATO proposals amid fear of a clash with the political class. That is on page 7. So it ought to be an interesting story. Then a bang in the middle of the paper. New bill. President, MPs, MCAs and governors to get seven years instead of five. It's a proposal, eh? Proposal. Don't tear your hair down. Don't do anything strange. It's a proposal. It's a proposal. Senators plan to extend term limits. Okay? Mm. It also creates the office of the Prime Minister, similar to the proposals in the NATCO report. This isn't a new discussion. Oh, Lord. It has been there before. Yeah. Now it has brought, it been brought up again. And this, since this is Kenya, mm. it is not accidental that this thing is coming up now. Mm. <sighs> It submits other things that have been planned and other things that they feel they should, they would like to do. Not a priority. Sawa, sawa. Sawa. Very good. Mm -hmm. Twenty uh, traffic. Yeah. Mzuri. It's important. 24 minutes to 7. How are the roads looking like? Flooded? Hope not. This is the Situation Room. The only way to start your yes, day. they are um, coming in from certain parts. Look, we had rain all night, so um, the parts of Mombasa Road, uh, which folks are a bit worried about, also parts coming off of Muranga Road and then getting into the city this morning. Um, the parts that are flooded coming out of South Sea, South B, Nairobi West, and then touching on Mombasa Road, also parts of Langata Road. So everybody's being asked to be very careful. Do not approach a pool of water because you do not know its depth, so we do not get stuck. Yes, traffic is starting to build on the thicker superhighway, and we're seeing traffic coming in from the outer ring junction and then even beyond that coming in from safari park and uh, kasarani out then towards the cbd so let's look out for that it's already heavy on the um Pagan pangani underpass everywhere else not just yet but we're going to keep an eye on things if the rain keeps coming down you want to be careful visibility will be lower so go slower hey <laughs> Where? Mm -hmm. spice of mke on x hashtag the situation room you're done for the day <laughs> You're it's done. Over. We shall. <laughs> Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. Nature, death, ruin, script plays on. Heavy rains experienced in the country over the weekend caused destruction with more deaths being reported. The body of a woman who is believed to have been washed away by raging rainwater was retrieved from the Ngong River. Officers at the Langata police station are investigating the matter. Boy. In its latest weather forecast, the Kenya Met, Eric's favorite people, yesterday warned Kenyans to brace themselves for more heavy rain in the next five days. So, will it be every day heavy rain from morning to night? <laughs> will it be one day and then skip one and then you go to the next? You just expect more heavy rain in the next five days. And then after the five days, they'll give you another five days. <laughs> Rainfall heavy is expected, rains. I quote, uh -huh. uh, to continue over several parts of the country. Heavy rainfall is expected to occur in some parts of the get it, get 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 highlands, uh -huh. uh, east and west of the Rift Valley. <laughs> <laughs> so wait first. Go on. <laughs> I'm sure there's more. The Victoria Basin. Garbas. <laughs> so you know that place. Okay. <laughs> 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 uh -huh. The southeastern lowlands, the coast, <laughs> stop looking at me, the northwestern, <laughs> south of the what? <laughs> the Limpopo. <laughs> south yes okay. <laughs> mm. the southeastern lowlands mm -hmm. the coast northwestern and northeastern kenya <laughs> <laughs> that, that one they've, they've given us a round trip <laughs> yeah. uh, okay okay i didn't get it please read again okay start again start this <clears throat> all the bases uh -huh. okay on. all the bases mm -hmm. In the latest weather forecast, mm -hmm. the Kenya Meteorological Department mm -hmm. yesterday warned Kenyans to brace themselves for, for more heavy rain in the next five days. Okay. Rainfall is expected to continue over several parts of the country. Several parts. Several. Mm -hmm. Heavy rainfall is likely to occur in some parts of the highlands, east and west of the Rift Valley, mm -hmm. 
the Lake Victoria Basin, mm -hmm. the Rift Valley itself, mm -hmm. not just east and west, but also inside, mm -hmm. um, the southeastern lowlands, mm -hmm. the coast, mm -hmm. northwestern and northeastern Kenya. Everywhere <laughs> else. Come on, just here, Jenaiko. It will not rain. Uh, thank you. <laughs> But if I, if I, where I, you are, that place was not mentioned, you are okay. I think they've covered the country. Right? <laughs> As opposed to saying for the next five days it will rain in Kenya. Yeah. All right. Now, just so that you know, Highlands West. Mm -hmm. How did you know yeah. of the Rift Valley, Valley. Mm -hmm. yeah. the Lake Victoria Basin, mm -hmm. and the Rift Valley, which include Siaya, Kisumu, Homa Bay, Migori. Kisi Nyamira, Transoia, Baringo, Wasingishu, Elgeo, Marquette, Nandi, Nakuru, Narok, Kericho, Bomet, Kakamega, Vihiga, Bungoma, Busia, and West Pokot counties will experience heavy rains. So, <laughs> Rift Valley now includes Nyanza. Yes. No, those well, are, those are like west. Bas basin. Remember, basin. there's basin. basin. There's, there's west there's of the Rift Valley. Highland West. And then there's basin. basin. And then there's Lake the Victoria Rift Basin. Lake Victoria and Basin is a Nyanza. Those are Nyanza people. Mm. Yeah. All right. Okay. Highlands, mm. just you guys were wondering now, Muko class. Oh, now we're explaining now, okay. Father. You've been saying you don't know where highlands and lowlands are, so okay. now we're telling you. Mm -hmm. Highlands? Highlands, but these ones, the highlands that are east of the Rift Valley is mm. Nairobi, in mm -hmm. case you didn't know. Mm -hmm. Nyandarwa, Laikipia, Nyeri, Kirinyaga, Muranga, Kiambu, they've said Meru again, but it's mm -hmm. okay. Embu and Tharakanithi, those guys, will also experience rainy weather. Rainy weather, Ile. Sawa. Now, mm -hmm. the northeastern region which is known to be dry, will also get rain. This mm. is Marsabit, Mandera, Wajia, Garissa, and Isiolo. Okay. Now, do you know where the southeastern lowlands are? Ukambani. Ah, well done. Mm. Kitui, Makweni, Machakos, Kajado, and Taita will have some rains as well as the coast region. Now, the Kenya Urban Roads Authority has urged motorists in Nairobi to keep off Rilo Dinga Way, the former Bagathi Way, Langata Road near Wilson in Nairobi and links in Nyali, Mombasa County. To keep off? Keep off because these are the ones over the last couple of days that have had some serious issues. Visibility was not poor. It was impossible. Okay. And a number of people, there were some accidents there. Now this is Lynx Road in, in <coughs> Nyali and Rilo Dingaway in Nairobi. Kura has said that. Kura has said that. Avoid these roads. Yes. We wish to okay. inform motorists plying these roads to drive with caution, but just before they said they should keep off, so, you know, choose which one. A technical team has been sent to the affected areas to assess the situation. Actually, I think it's assess, but mm -hmm. okay. And mm -hmm. offer alternatives to the affected motorists. Mm -hmm. Sawa. Mm -hmm. In Machakos County, choppers were used to evacuate residents of Ngelani mm. who were trapped in their homes by floods. This was a thing, actually, that people could not get out of their homes because the water had risen to, you know, beyond the door. We couldn't sleep because rain had flooded our houses. We were forced to move to higher ground, according to Vincent Muli, who was a local resident, and he had reached out to the Kenya Red Cross and the Machakos County government for help. 360 Phase 2 estate mm. in Siokimao, Machakos County, Tenants living on the ground floor were forced to move out of their houses, and we saw that the governor then had sent a rescue mission to then be able to go and get them. Uh, Wavinia and Deti sent uh, county officials to assess the situation and find a solution. Many of them were staying at the DG's office. Deputy governor. Yes, as okay. in they were moved there temporarily okay. before they found a, a solution, whether to go to relatives or whatnot. Mm. Residents said they bought their houses for $6.5 <clears throat> million and they've had res unresolved issues with water since they bought them. Mm. So it goes on and on and on. We see pictures from around the country, whether we're talking about uh, residents of Bate, Muino, Tororo, Chongis, everybody is having a problem here. Tana River is not left out. Kisumu, um, and Yang Nyongo, who is the governor, was flagged off non-food items for displaced people said floods have accepted ap affected almost 8,000 people across the county and that they're dealing with desilting rivers and streams to help control the floods affected areas Nyakach, Mohoroni, Nyando, Kadibo, Kisumu Central, Kisumu East and Seme yeah. you throw a stone where it will land there's an issue it's in the be, country yeah yeah it's a big one yeah. now this one the alert that's been issued by kura the mm -hmm. kenya urban roads authority is good yes however um what you'd want to see is signage from very far as you're approaching langata road they tell you if you're going to such and such a place it's better for you to use this because just posting it on twitter and saying avoid 
uh, Raila Odinga way and Langata Road and we have police on site to guide motorists. You basically are telling the police when people come there and they're already on Langata Road, that's when you start telling them, oh, by the way, uh, it's not good to be on this road. Mm. But you're here. Just yeah, but you're already here. So what you should be doing is at the beginning of Langata Road, wherever it begins, whether it's in Karen or whether it's in at the Galleria, the junction with uh, Magadi Road, have people guiding you on how where to go if you want to go into town all right so get into langata go into the new uh, bypass that passes through kibera and tungong road if, those are the signages that you should be expecting to see there to just divert people and say if you must not go through langata road through t-mall and uh, that's mbagathi way junction just don't yeah. use these other alternative roads but just putting it out there on twitter now they'll come and tell us but we want people we put an alert. If you find yourself on the uh, maroon that Timor, it's No, 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 no. That, that, that is. That's why I have an issue with all these agencies. <laughs> Their communication is wanting. Can we just take a quick look at what's going on in Nairobi? Yeah. Um, and a lot of this can be attributed, look, whether we like it or not, whether it's going to be political or not, mm. a lot of what we see with the drainage not moving can be attributed to a lot of the uh, buildings that we see coming up. So there's nowhere for the water to move to. Yeah. Um, whether we're looking at South B, South C, this uh, problem, whether we're looking at here um, in Mkuru, mm. whether we are looking at uh, Ndemi Road in Kilimani, a lot of those because of these deep gullies that have been built yeah. right yeah. water goes in and it has no um outlet and so these are the issues that we're seeing we also had to see rescues taking place in parts of kileleshwa mm. and kilimani over the weekend so it's a tight one it is really really this one is a, it's a it's a tough one and when you see all these things the one thing that i always think about because i actually even saw an alert from um, the acting county secretary Hmm. and um, head of public service in the county, Bonanalo, which was just talking about the areas that have been affected. And many of these areas that you'll find, they're slum areas of Nairobi. Think about them. Think about the people who live in the Mukurus, the three Mukurus. Think about the people who are living in Madare, in all these areas, okay? What kind of condition are they in right now? Mm -mm. It rained that heavily. Sure. These are mud, mud walled houses mm -mm. with Mabati roofs, no drainage at all, nothing, no paved area. So you're just getting out of your house and you're getting into this mud pool. And it's been raining overnight. So you and your children have just been, you know, working all the buckets and cups inside the house because yeah. it's also raining inside the house. Can you imagine? And what when the water, because if you're talking about the levels of water, mm. it will break through your walls. Mm. So essentially, you'll be living with water inside your house. Yes, you will. You the will. flooding is not in the area. The flooding will be inside mm. your residence. Mm. Now, this is not something that is new. It is not the first time we have had floods. Remember, last year we had this conversation with a gentleman who was in charge of these things in the county of Nairobi. Mm. And we did point out and we said, you know, come the rains, come the problems. Mm. And we were assured then that, you know, Enough, take care of it. Enough precisely. has been done. Yeah, enough <coughs> has been done. Now, when you look at the pictures, forget the stories. Just the pictures alone tell you all the stories you need to see. And my friend, this is not a joke. Neither is it a laughing mm -hmm. matter. Because by the time you find a lorry, lorry, halfway submerged, how high do you think that water, how high do you think that level of that water is? Mm. And you can see. It's, it's it's really sad. It's utter, utter, utter madness. Oh, it's really sad. <laughs> really, 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 really. <clears throat> what this means also is that all the passageways that were meant for water, mm -hmm. buildings have since blocked. Yeah. So it becomes very, very easy when it rains for water to just collate in one place. Mm -hmm. And then the levels keep rising. Activity but, around the riparian areas. Ah, yes. It's, it's, and... As we say, well, we were warned, were we not? Mm. Yeah. The problem is, these rains that we are now experiencing are <coughs> heavier than any we've had in a very long time. Mm. So the damage that we're speaking of is going to be immense. Oh, yeah. Ah. 
these are not garden variety problems no no these are big ones these are big issues these are big 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 issues big and issue. it's going to get worse because the rains are not abating they, they have actually just begun mm. yes so what happens midpoint when they're now sort of like heading towards peaking what are you going to be seeing mm. Mm? <coughs> Hey. So General Gola was um, uh, coming out of West Pokot where he had gone to inspect the refurbishment of a school, right? And there's an ongoing security operation in the area. Now the government plans to establish state-of-the-art security camps in the troubled Baringo and Zamburu counties in a bid to tame banditry in the region. Over the years, this vice has left a trail of destruction, death and untold misery to the residents of the two counties. The nation yesterday learned that days before the demise of the CDF, General Francis Ogola, top military officers had visited Baringo to hold talks with county government officials on the establishment of a KDF camp in the area. General Ogola died in an aircraft uh, coming out of uh, El Geo Maracuet County. The Baringo meeting was attended by the Ministerial Ad Hoc Committee on Military Lands Chair, Brigadier Faustin Sirera, Colonel George Otieno, Governor Benjamin Cheboy, County Lands Executive and Ruben Ruto, among other officials. The military is seeking about a thousand acres of land in Mukutani, Baringo South, and Luyamorok in Tiati to set up a permanent camp, para, para, paramilitary training field, and an aircraft space. The presence of the military will help in solving the protracted banditry crisis. Remember what uh, uh, the MP for Nini has told us. What's his name? Um, Which one? Oh, um, let's. Uh, Oh, Kosing. Thanks. Yeah, the MP Kosing has been here many times and said, look at Uganda, what Museveni did. Put military bases in the Karamoja region. Peace ensued. What we want is a heavy presence of security agencies, military camps. It appears that the government is now taking that route. Mm. So the establishment, of it, when they take a thousand acre uh, land in the Baringo South area and they set up a, a military camp there and then they set up other bases Let's see how this proceeds. I mean because the people of these counties have really really suffered many years Many years if it's not banditry. It's other things for example the Kenya Red Cross volunteers There's a photo here in the nation of uh, vo volunteers from the Kenya Red Cross Handling the body of a girl at Kampisamaki on the shores of Lake Baringo in Baringo County yesterday. The body was recovered after a boat carrying 23 people capsized near Kokwa Island in the lake yesterday. 16 people rescued. Six are still missing. Wow. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. City. Mm -hmm. There was that bizarre story. Was it bizarre? What kind of story was it? The headline in the star. What was it? <coughs> was it that one? The one about the JKU student. Mm. Mm. Well, yes, the story is on page three mm. of the. Uh, and um, I think the police have released video of mm. a man believed to have murdered mm. the university student Rita Waini mm. in a short term rental known as Airbnb in Roysambu, Nairobi. Mm. Investigators linked the killing on January 13th to occultism. The head was later found in a dam in Kiambu and identified by her parents during the post mortem. In a footage, a slim young man wearing dark glasses who seems to be in his late 20s can be seen walking side by side with the four-year-old student. Mm. Her dismembered body was found in a black bag mm. in Roysambu apartment dustbin. Her body had been chopped up with a hacksaw while a fourth-year student had been seen to the right of the suspect who was wearing a white baseball cap, black jeans, a black pullover and white shoes. Yes. So they have now released the photo yes, of the person. Yeah. Yes. Oh my goodness. That I really, 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 really pray that we shall nab this killer. And also get to understand. So what was it? He'll be found. He will say it's about cultism. Then um, who are the cult members? Who are the cult leaders? He will be found. And what other heinous crimes the are they committed? Will he be found this? alive? Hmm. Because if he's alive, then one can get to the bottom mm. of it. If he's dead, then... Uh, That's it. Dead mm, man that with mm. Remember there was a story <coughs> of this gentleman who yeah. 
reportedly allegedly killed his girlfriend in the US and then came to Kenya. Yes. yes. We don't hear that story anymore, do we? Well, he is he was rearrested and taken to court, right? Yeah, he is awaiting um, extradition if that's going to happen. Mm. But there are certain cases that he, rather charges that he has to answer here in Kenya, uh, including but not limited to um, escaping, escaping from Sobibor. From Sobibor, <laughs> right. So uh, it's actually, I think he's, there was a mention. There's a mention coming up mm. um, in court in a couple of weeks, or if not this week, uh, about what will happen before he then faces the next few. He was actually asking for a number of things. Uh -huh. You know, <coughs> he needs access to his finances mm. to pay his lawyer, mm. and they've frozen his accounts. You know, uh, unfair treatment, okay. etc. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Where? There's Siasa ya Ukambani. Waipa leader Kalonzo Musioka has called out Makweni Governor Mutula Kalonzo Jr. for implying that the region started getting fewer government appointments and development after the death of veteran Ukambani politician Mulu Mutisia. According to Mutula Jr., Mutisia, who was close with former President Jomo Kenyatta and Daniel Arab Moi, did a lot for the region. Days before his death in 2004, Mutisia reportedly blessed Kalonzo to succeed him during a meeting held at Mulu Mutisia Gardens in Machakos Town. This is what Kalonzo Mutula, Mutula Jr. said. Mulu Mutisia was an honest man, and that is what distinguished him. Honestly, honesty. In this community, we have not written enough about him. Whatever Mutisia did for Kenya can only be understood by life testimonies of people who worked with him. This community started suffering after his death. Sayo Kalonzo Mekawapi? Apo nyuma. This community had people everywhere in government. We started getting out of government when Mutisia died. I want us to sit down and ask ourselves why we have no people in government. Uh, when he rose to speak, a seemingly agitated Kalonzo censured Mutula. He told the governor not to dwell on government positions, saying Kenya has experienced structural changes, including the 2010 constitution. Mutula, you have said when Mutisia died is when things started going wrong for this community. But don't worry even for one minute. During those times, we had up to five ministers among other positions. But I can say we have experienced structural changes with different arrangements under the 2010 constitution. The most important thing for the community is not political positions, but for all Kenyans to enjoy their democratic rights where we don't see people looting public funds. You should worry about justice for all, but not those positions. They were speaking at Mudedeni, Mwala, Machakos County, during Mutisia's 20th anniversary, where a majority of the speakers insisted, insisted on the region's unity ahead of the next general election. Well, you know, <coughs> uh, that is why it is important mm. to have democracy. <laughs> <laughs> One would wonder, had Mutula Kilonzo Jr. said that the person in the form of uh, Kalonzo Musyoka was the me all and end all of everything. Would we have the same sentiment coming through? Uh, no. You see, there'd be nothing to respond to. Sindio? Mm. 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 I remember politics being what it is. Mm. Okay? What one observes over time is that political leaders or people who have risen to the helm mm. where they are reported to be the leaders of communities mm. do not like being reminded of history especially in history where they don't feature prominently mm. okay or a history which when it it was the present mm. that history when it was the present their position was not as elevated as it is currently mm. okay no political leaders want to remain at the helm of everything why would mutula jr stand up and say that knowing fully well that Kalonzo is there. Of course. Uh, but the Kalonzo, I think, has thrown down the gauntlet. Even him, he has decided. He also started. I think he had figured out this can leadership. In Western, there is Tawe. We can see. He has started Aye. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okamba, Aye. Aye. Yes. This guy, he has figured, you know something? Yeah. Uh, this, these guys, yeah, yeah, we've been with them. Like any, there is no harm Aye. in stirring up this particular honestness. What? But shall we see whether he actually is on to something or maybe it was just, you know. Or that something will be on to him. <laughs> <laughs> something will be on to him. Yeah. All right. Coming up to 7 a.m. time for the news and then we'll have another conversation shortly. Good morning.
blows up your life. News wire. I'm Lea Ubaga. Efforts to end the doctor's strike hit a dead end once again after KMPDU leaders claim that the government has no intention of addressing their demands despite agreeing to hold negotiations. Led by the Union Secretary General Davji Atella, they blamed the government for not being ready to address their interests despite their readiness to return to work only if the national and county governments agree to implement some of the recommendations in the 2017 CBA. Initially we wanted that by the time we were close ending strike, we have those doctors already employed. We didn't want to pro this process, so those are some of the things. Yes. And uh, also even the business areas we wanted the instance, but now they will offer some inst they will offer paying in, ins in installments. So because we are looking at an uh, aspect of compromising, that's the thing, that, that's, that's what I was just saying, uh, we have not, we are not saying everything now. We can, we can compromise and have a timeline of imitation of some of these things, but with clear-cut plan. I know that there's somebody here watching this evening, hoping that this strike can end soon so they can go and get that surgery that they've been waiting for. This event comes as the medic strike has entered its second month now with a court last week ordering the government and KMPDU to resolve the dispute between them within a month's time. Meanwhile, the Kenya Union of Clinical Officers, Kenya National Union of Medical Laboratory Officers in KMPDU will this morning hold a meeting with the clergy. The clergy team will be led by Archbishop Ole Sepit and Bishop Anthony Muheria with the aim of pleading with the health workers to call off their strike which has affected health services. Pharmacists have called for an investigation into the alleged sale of a day trip drug to students in chemists. PSK President Louise Mashogu said the drug which treats insomnia and anxiety should be sold on prescription as it has strong sedative effects and some people report they were robbed or raped after their drinks were spiked with the drug. Mashogu father condemned any unethical behavior within the pharmaceutical profession. Last week, Mombasa County Commissioner Mahmoud Noor said they had closed 21 pharmacies for selling the drug called Rofif, Rofipnol to minors without prescription. Hundreds of families in Nairobi and Machakos County spent the night in the cold following overnight rains that caused flooding across the city and in the Siokimau area. A sport check revealed flooded roads, marooned homes and collapsed buildings as a result of Gong River and Athi River breaking their banks. The Red Cross has put the number of those affected by floods in the two counties at over 6,800 with about 250 families being displaced by the floods. Ya rakati mimi nimelala tulikuwa na mtoto kwa nyumba mama mama bibi yangu alikuwa hapa nje alikuwa anafanya usafi in that process nikasikia kaniita toka toka nyumba inaanguka mimi nikatoka kwa kitanda kapepa mtoto wangu nikamweka kando tukatoka nje tukatoroka mimi nilikuja tu asubuhi nikakuta nyumba imeangukiwa bahati mzuri siku kuwepo kama ningelikuwepo sasa saa hii ningelikuwa maiti kwa hivyo ni vizuri jambo kama hili likitokea ishukuriwe hatua ya dharura wale ambao wanaishi pembezoni mwa mto wanafaa kujitahadharisha ya kwamba kipindi cha mvua kinapofika ikiwa huko kabisa pembezoni mwa mto inafaa uanze kujiondoa mapema Despite the Met Department announcing that heavy rains will continue in various parts of the country residents of flood and affected areas have blamed their leaders for failing to put in place appropriate strategies to avert flood related losses Tungie homba kama iko uwezekano serikali ile mchanga ilimwoga pale mbele ya ndaraja hiyo mchanga ifagiriwe yote wenye wamejenga hapo watafutie mahali pengine wanayetajenga juu ni kwa maoni yangu naona hiyo mchanga ndio inasababisha hii mambo yote parapa ile imefurika kama mnavyoona hapa kumetea maji tumejaribu kuita chief wa hii area lakini ya Megno sasa karabati imewekwa lakini unapata mtu ana block side yake sasa sijui MPY yeri ama mwenye nafaa kusimamia ama watu wanema wakuja watusaidie kwa sababu hata imekuwa unhygienic kwa sababu kama hii ni cho imejea na maji kitoka is very unhygienic kupitia kwa hiyo maji That's the news wire I'm Lea Ubaga
Spice FM, Nakuru. Okay, so what are we looking at now? A few minutes after 7 o'clock, traffic building in the city. It's coming in heavy on the Thicker Superhighway, and uh, we're going to touch into um, the CBD from there. At the Outer Ring Junction, then coming in past that GSU area, some traffic there, uh, but not really much in uh, most parts of the city today. Let's take a look at the um, at Jogo Road, getting towards Landis, and then the Kamkunji roundabout, a little bit of, of it there. Remember, we've been told certain parts of the city um, to stay away from, at least for now, because of this flooding Rilo Dinga Way, if you don't need to, do not. Let's look over into Mombasa, where Links Road and Nyali, also one that you should stay away from, according to Kura. Think about it. Do it. Let's talk. Spice FM, KE on X, hashtag, The Situation Room. Good morning, and I love your show. Thank you. Thank you. Having come from Bakikuyu radio background, I migrated to Spice <laughs> because of the content. I was born in a slum, but somehow I got a break in life. So sometimes when you see the sweating coming out because of the passion and whatever it is, <laughs> <laughs> behind the noise, there are people. And we share the same umbilical cord. It shouldn't be like that. I am so disappointed. We used to tell Honda uh, Borela Molotinga that he's doing police of conmanship. And even President Uhuru Kenyatta, Srikali, he is going to conmanship you. You cannot promise people that you reduce tax, then you double. In politics, mm. There is uh, the issue of trust. Mm. For you to turn around and then stab the same people who gave you that trust, there is no other level of dishonesty. The Situation Room, Kenya's biggest conversation. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is the Situation Room. Okay. Now, it is eight minutes after seven, and this is Kenya's biggest conversation, The Situation Room. We thank you very much, everybody who's tuning in this morning. Asante Nisana, welcome to the 22nd day of April 2024. It's been raining throughout the weekend. It's been a bad weekend for many people in Nairobi, in very many urban areas, even in the rural areas. How are you coping in the rain? Make sure that you stay safe. All agencies, the Kenya Meteorological Department says expect the rain to continue, heavy rain throughout the week. Uh, the Kenya Urban Roads Agent Authority says, yes, uh, watch out for these roads that are likely to be um, heavily flooded. The county governments are also saying the same thing. The county governments of Nairobi, of Mombasa, of Kisumu, of Nakuru, all of them are saying this. So let's just all be careful. However, we want to have a conversation now about legal aid and national legal aid service are our guests this morning we have two gentlemen william musyoki kimandi is the board chair of the national legal aid service he's here alongside caleb kisuya who is a state council good morning gentlemen good morning. good morning welcome to kenya's biggest conversation thank you william that's the hot seat of the situation room mm -hmm. caleb that's the second hot seat thank of you. the situation room this morning we make both of them hot. We want to understand a lot about the National Legal Aid Service, what this is all about, and how citizens should benefit from this. But to welcome you to this conversation, Siti Muga is here, and he has a bucket full of proverbs. Yes. This week, this week the proverbs are from which country? City? Congo Brazzaville. Congo Brazzaville. The Republic of Congo. This is not <coughs> to be confused with DRC. Mm -mm. Oh yeah. yeah. Hey. This Congo mm. borders. A certain ocean mm. that is known as Atlantic. Okay. Yes, this is a beautiful thing about this continent. Mm. There's Indian Ocean to the east, 
Is it west? And then there's uh, east. Uh, east. east. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. And then we have uh, the Atlantic, Atlantic to, the the west, to the west. Mm. Yeah. The west is a very large area. I mm. mean, I'm trying to picture mm. that part. All when, the way. All the way to West Africa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Now. Including north. Inclu <laughs> <laughs> Easterly. Yeah. East. Yeah. Mm. South of the What's the official name of Congo Brazzaville? The Republic of Congo. That's it? Yes. So it's just, you remove the word democratic and you have a new country? Yes. Okay. Mm. Uh -huh. mm. uh -huh. But uh, so mm. that we do not, because even DRC is Congo. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So that is yes. why it is known by its capital. Mm. Okay. There's a little history behind it, but that's the story I'll tell you tomorrow. Okay. Okay. The rain does not fear the authority of a king. Now in Kilingala, what they say is Mbula, Ebangaka Mukondite. Mbula eba, ebangaka mokonzi te. te. Yes. Musioka? Yes. They're not talking about Mbula. <laughs> well, actually, I was wondering whether they are talking to because uh, Mbula and uh, Mbua. Mm. You know, close, Mbua, close. Rain. Yes. Know, close, yeah. So yes. at least you can have an idea they're talking about. They're both Bantu languages. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yes. So, so the rain does not fear the authority of a king. Does not fear the authority of a king. You know these declarations that leaders like making. Mm. Mm. Eh? Make a declaration for the rain and let's see what happens. Mm. Just make a declaration mm. and say, "This rain will cease tomorrow." Mm. Man, it will rain like you've never seen before. <laughs> William, what's your interpretation of this proverb? Um, it doesn't matter what position you hold. If it's time to rain, it will rain on everybody. Whether you're the king, whether you're the subject, whether you're indeed. Anything found on the land, including animals and, uh, and crops, I guess that's what it means. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell about yours. Uh, I've taken it. I've understood it to mean that uh, if something is supposed to happen, it will happen, irrespective of your authority, whether you, you dictate or you're a democrat. Either way, it must happen. <laughs> it is like uh, powers of nature. Mm. You can't control them. Nature is no respecter of kings. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> okay. Okay, now let's get to learn about the National Legal Aid Service, yeah. and we'll start with you, William, Yes. as the board chairman. Yes. So tell us what this is. Yes, um, mm. National Legal Aid Service, I would say, is, um, is the sum total of all the legal framework and institutional frameworks that have been put up in place to give effect to some articles of the Constitution, particularly Article 19 to Article 48 and Article 52. Now, of course, that may not make much sense unless mm. I go further. No, it makes sense. Mm. Mm. Yeah, okay. there, are, there are very many articles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so perhaps I could elaborate. Yeah? Uh -huh. Now, uh, with the coming of the new constitution, mm. we have this celebrated chapter called uh, Chapter 4, which talks about fundamental rights and freedoms. And uh, you've had a lot of commentators saying why our constitution is so beautiful because of that particular chapter. Mm. Now, fun, it talks about fundamental rights, and Article 19.2, which forms part of the basis of the National Legal Aid Service, talks about um, recognition of those fundamental rights, and not just recognition, but t taking steps to make sure that uh, they are enjoyed, people um, have their human dignity preserved, we promote social justice and also help individuals realize their full human potential. That is Article 19.2. Then again, fundamental rights and freedoms, we are told that uh, they are not granted by the state. They accrue to us merely by virtue of being humans. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the second question arises, what are these rights? Mm -hmm. And there are so many of them. I mean, one of them is what you're doing here. The, the freedom of expression, mm. to just be able to sit and talk what you want to talk about. But for purposes, uh, we have Article 48 that talks about uh, access to justice. It's mm. one of the rights that are guaranteed to citizens by virtue of our constitution. Yes, pause. Yes, please. Guaranteed. Absolutely, yes. Okay, you're going to elaborate on what you mean by guaranteed. Yes, okay. Yes. Now, again, um, of course, we have other rights. For mm. example, the right to life. We have freedoms, like freedom from slavery, freedom from... Hunger. Uh, hunger, and uh, other rights, actually, that the president have been talking about, mm. to, you know, to housing, to, to health. For purposes, of course, I'll insist that uh, 
Article 48 talks about access to justice okay. being guaranteed. And then again now Article 50 that talks mm. about uh, the right to fair trial. There are so many um, uh, things that are listed as to what constitutes the right to fair trial. Mm. But for our purposes we are interested in Article 50, Subarticle 2, G and H. It mm. talks about the right to have an advocate to represent you. And H talks about uh, the right to be assigned an advocate mm. if there's a likelihood of uh, prejudice to be caused to an accused person um, when you're presented to court for trial. Mm -hmm. So now to go back to what does ELAS do? Mm. We are a state agency mandated to make sure that we give effect to those um, provisions of the Constitution. Mm. Okay. Right to fair trial comes with right to have an advocate. Yes. Or to have... An, an advocate assigned yes to you yes assigned by whom by the courts when mm. you're presented to court at the first instance mm. uh, you have a right to be informed promptly and is an express also provision of the Constitution yeah. to be told that uh, you have a right to be represented to have an advocate of your own choice and that right actually is stated as such in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. But then the following uh, section, 52H, says that uh, you have a right to be assigned. So the first one talks about you having the right to may choose or not choose. But if in the assessment of the trial court, there is a likelihood of prejudice to be suffered and you cannot afford, then you have to be assigned. So yes, uh, what the court does is to inform you of that right of course it doesn't choose for you mm. and that's why we are there they write letters to us and say we have a case here in our assessment the accused person is likely to suffer prejudice if he's not presented they have a right to have an advocate please take it over okay yeah so is it only on the basis of the fact that this individual or this party is likely to suffer prejudice then that the right to have somebody defend them comes into play or can it just be open-ended and say, look, this individual cannot afford an advocate and one ought to be provided to them? Which one are we looking at here? It is open-ended, I would say. It's okay. It is not a question of whether you're likely to suffer prejudice. Uh -huh. You have a right to be represented by an advocate in whatever circumstances. Okay. Yeah. So this is kind of like the Office of the Public Defender, is it not? Uh, yes, Which it is. Which we've yeah. been kind of... The conversation has been yeah. in uh, judicial circles for a while now yeah, about yeah. the establishment of the Office of Public Defender. What would be the difference between then ENLAS and the Office of the Public Defender? I won't say... Thank you. I, I won't say there's much difference because basically if you look at our mandate, and which is very elaborate, you look mm. at the Act, mm. there are a lot of things that you're mandated by law to do. Mm. And uh, the bottom line is that you're defending the public. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so strictly speaking, there won't really be much difference between uh, what ENLAS does and what a public defender should do. Mm. Yeah. Is ENLAS established by law? Absolutely, yes. So to give effect to those articles of the Constitution, mm. um, law was set up. Um, the Legal Aid Act, which was passed on the 26th of April 2016. Mm -hmm. and the commencement date was sometime in May 2017. So yes, we operate under the law. And what's the structure? Um, the law sets up um, the Legal Aid Service Board, mm -hmm. uh, for which I am the chair. Mm -hmm. I sit with other night board, board members. We have a secretariat uh, comprised of uh, advocates um, like uh, my colleague here, Mr. Caleb Kiswia, mm -hmm. and, and many others. Um, you, there's a question you asked at the start, mm -hmm. whether it's under the AG or it's under Ellis. Mm -hmm. um, when it was conceptualized, initially it was supposed to be under the AG, but that was before the law came into force. And part of what you're trying to, to give effect to the law mm. is to, to become independent, so that we are operating fully independently as a national legal aid service. But for now, we haven't gotten there yet, but mm. uh, it's something you're working towards. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so how, does this, how is this characterized, or is it constituted, uh, and last now? Mm -hmm. um, I would imagine a cohort of advocates who are then ready to represent anybody who does not have um, access to legal representation. Well, how does that work? That a case comes up and then we assign yeah. somebody to you? Or, yeah, yeah, or yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, it's, a, it's a very good question. Yeah, um, we are supposed to be more or less like the largest law firm. You can imagine um, if we are going to stand out and say that we are the body um, 
that is mandated by law to present people who cannot. Mm -hmm. First of all, the moment you talk about the people who cannot afford legal services, there are many. In fact, the wording of the statute, I think, at the uh, at the start there, it says it's an act of parliament uh, to provide legal aid to the vulnerable, mm -hmm. to the indigent, to the marginalized. Nice. And that form a huge part of our population. Mm. Meaning, therefore, that if you're going to provide services to that huge uh, cluster of people, we need a lot of lawyers. Is it, a lot of lawyers. Is it a huge part of our population or is it the majority of our population? Oh, well, majority. Wow. Well, <laughs> yeah. the question of language. Uh, a majority of the population. And um, to tie that to also what happens, there has been this feeling that uh, legal services are preserved of the rich. Yep. And um, and uh, when you talk about uh, economic, uh, social rights, political rights, uh, it's one thing to talk about it. It's another to actually go ahead and actualize. And what the law is doing is to give effect to those rights, to be available to that majority uh, uh, part of our population. Mm. Now, to go back to your question, Lou, um, how do we go about it? We are supposed to be that large law firm. In fact, a study has been done and uh, shows that uh, if we are to act optimally, as contemplated in the law, we are supposed to have as many as 1,200 advocates. Where um, we have in the several court stations, I think we have about 150 court stations across the country. Mm. Just like we have DPP or police station everywhere across the country, the same way we are supposed to have an office in every station so that mm. if somebody then has conflict with the law and not necessarily conflict mm. there are people who still just want to access mm -hmm. legal services yes. you can go to that office and then you ask um, about legal advice about access to courts about whatever legal issue you have we do not have that what we have at the moment uh, because of still working as a department of the AG we have a very lean staff we have few advocates who have been seconded to our office by the Honorable Attorney General mm. In fact, not many. We have only about um, 10 advocates at the moment. Mm. And uh, that is what is supposed to happen. We get letters from the court. Remember what you said about courts assigning um, uh, an advocate? Yep. These letters are supposed to come to us. Mm. And then we assign it to a state council and say, please deal with this matter. Can I ask now, a question? Yes, please. Is there any county in this country that doesn't have the presence of the AG's office? The AG's, um, I am told they are decentralizing. They are counties that don't have, but they're doing very well. I'm sure I have heard about decentralization. So they are going to those counties at the moment. See, so do you know how many counties these are? The ones where the AG is? Is not. Where the presence is not there and the work I, I don't know exactly how many that okay. is not added. The numbers may not be important, but the yeah. reason why I ask is yeah. I am of the view that if indeed you fall under the AG's office, then I would take it that where there is a representation of the AG's office. That is what it should be, but it shouldn't be like that. I say it actually in the process of delinking. It should be independent. We right? should be independent. And in fact, uh, steps have been taken, mm. and the AG is also helping us to help us delink. Mm. For now, because initially the idea was conceptualized as a department under the AG. Uh, we are now trying to link so that we are independent from the AG. So we should be. We should be independent and uh, we are working towards that. There are steps to be taken. There are processes of making a, an agent like ours semi-autonomous. Mm. What, what are the benefits of being semi-autonomous? Well, because we are able to make our own decisions. And I'll tell you why. For example, um, when you have a board like we have, the whole idea of having a board with uh, representat representation like we have, mm -hmm. the whole idea is to give them autonomy to make their own decisions and to take responsibility for the success of an act like we have, the Legal Aid Act. And now, to burden now the AG, who has other responsibilities. One of the benefits would be this. You can imagine, we want to employ. I've told you the number of advocates we have, about 9 or 10. Mm. We should have 1,200. But because they're not independent and we want to employ, we have to make a reference to the AG's office. Already, you wonder why then do you have a board, which by law has authority to employ? Mm. But because you are not delinked, we still have to refer. So one of the benefits to answer your question is that it gives us both a decision autonomy and also financial autonomy. I mean, there are those things that we'd like to do to give effect to the law, but because, again, we still have to make reference to another office, we are unable to do those things.
Now, given that you're all uh, legal individuals, uh, just help us understand this. Mm -hmm. If you get the autonomy, yes. it would mean you have a separate budget. Absolutely, yes. Okay. Mm. Uh, what are the steps that one then has to take to ensure that you have the sort of budget that would meet your needs? I, I ask the question because in many instances when we have people who are public officers, mm. the one thing that uniformly they talk about is lack of funds. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uniformly. Yeah. yeah. And you are coming to count it. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's true. Um, and I think that is one of the reasons we're here. First of all, to make people understand that there are these rights. And number two, for them to be able, able to enjoy those rights, uh, and I say it is not enough to say that you have the rights, steps must be taken to make sure that funds are available to make those rights useful, mm. if at all. Um, I'll give you an example. Article 43 of the Constitution talks about the right to decent uh, housing. Yep. And steps are being taken to make sure that uh, that right is exercised. And mm. that's why you're talking about uh, uh, about uh, deducting some money from... The same article talks about the rights to, to health. Mm. And steps are being taken to make sure that there are sufficient you know, systems in place to make sure that people have access to health. Mm. Perhaps the question would be, are there some rights that are more, you know, important than others? Yeah. The right to access to justice is in the same constitution yeah. under the same fundamental rights like the other rights. And yeah. therefore, the same way steps are being taken to make sure there's funding for health, for housing. I, I must say this. I appeared before the JLAC, Justice and Legal Affairs Committee, and mm. uh, the same question was posed. And I was saying, look, we may have to consider, of course... Uh, <laughs> I was mm. shut it down quite quickly, <laughs> whether this is the right time to talk about now introducing yet another tax to fund, because where else do we get the money? For now, we are anticipating that um, once we have the fund, it's one of the things that we're also trying to do. We haven't set up the fund. The state is going to put funds there, yeah. and also we expect money from donors. For, for now, in as much as don't have the fund, I can confirm to you that we are working with a lot of help from donors. Mm. Um, you may be aware that uh, we, uh, the pro bono, again, I didn't answer your question for <laughs> completely. How does it work? Mm. Is the question, are we working? We are working. Um, we do not have people coming to office. I said we are unable to do that because of lack of capacity. But does, mean that, does that mean that we are not working? Mm. The judiciary has been very, very helpful. In fact, they've been doing what you're supposed to be doing and uh, the the CG has put me on notice that they can't be doing what another uh, state agent is supposed to be doing uh, what happens is that uh, when somebody appears in court and they're in these circumstances you have described they're unable to to represent themselves and you can see they're going you know to suffer because of lack of an advocate we have the pro bono scheme mm -hmm. which was set up under some uh, guidelines which was set up by the CJ emeritus uh, honorable Mutunga Hmm. And uh, these people go to that uh, pro bono committee, they are assigned an advocate, and uh, they are paid some money. Hmm. Now, the money, as of now, is managed by the judiciary. Yep. And uh, I wish to confirm that this is not money allocated to the judiciary to do pro bono. This is money that they collect from donors, hmm. and somehow, before we put our act together, it's managed and um, and the uh, advocates are paid for you know mm -hmm. the same for person offering the pro bono services. yeah people people come they are assigned an advocate to yeah. go to the registry there's a committee the pro bono committee that is operating in all the the, the court stations mm -hmm. set by the registrar the registrar of stations mm -hmm. also there are representatives of advocates in these committees mm -hmm. and uh, when applications are made or when, when requests are made for lawyers, the pro bono committee assigns lawyers and their lawyers were always willing to be assigned. And then upon completion of the matter, actually at the start of the matter, upon getting instructions, you're given a small deposit, it's pro bono, so it's something very but, small. But uh, 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 what does pro bono mean? Oh yeah, another question. Pro bono, Latin meaning for free. <laughs> I see. So, <laughs> so the so question would be, why, why pay? Yeah. Yeah, this, I'm asking because it's for free for a small amount. I mean, it's mm. so for free. I would assume for free, free. for the individual who mm. is looking for the service. Yeah. So that you do not charge the individual. Mm. However, there are certain things that need to be done by yeah. advocates yeah. that would then require mm. something to yeah. be paid to yeah. them. Yeah. But so the individual who's receiving the service does not does pay not from pay. their pockets. Mm. Mm -mm. It's taken care of by paid. somebody else, mm. but the lawyer is paid. Yeah. 
I, I will tell you this. I mean, actually, when you talk about uh, the money is paid, as of now, mm. it's, it's only 30,000 shillings. Well, well, it's... Per case. Per, per case person. Mm. There has been that debate. These rules that are put um, in 2015 have been amended over the years. Mm. Uh, there was that debate about uh, uh, how much is enough. Mm -hmm. it, it's 30,000, 15 at the start of the case. It's not necessarily to pay for the lawyer's fees. And it doesn't matter how long the case uh, drags on for. It's going to remain 30,000 30, shillings. It's to cater for what we're saying. You, they are prison visits. One of my case person, some of them, because of their circumstances, they are held in in remand, there are visits, mm. there are photocopies to be done, although again the European Union is helping us a lot to to, to help us access some of these documents without without any fee. Mm. It's just to cater for that. But pro bono, yes, should be free. Mm. So this little amount is not necessarily legal fees. You don't start charging the way we charge under the advocates remuneration order. It's, uh, it's just something for catering for the small do we have a system in this country where some of the better established law firms mm. offer services because they are in a position to yeah. literally for free meaning it's at their cost and nobody else's they do they, they, there is actually and i must confirm even our organization is even as we put our act together i i have received a lot of calls from colleagues mm. people tell me what is it that we can do to help mm. they are willing and we're setting up um, a database where we have these lawyers some say i'm interested in in, in children's matters for mm. example mm. and i'm willing to take up matters in my area of geographical area of operation like uh, say i'm in Edorate or in mombasa we do the famous uh case for example i mean um, that was done I, I gather for free somebody is sitting and we encourage if you feel there's a matter that's it touches you, it pricks your conscience, and mm. you feel something is not happening. You, you you take it up for free without even asking for the 30,000 shillings. We have so many times advocates appearing in court. They see somebody bundled in, and um, from the manner they are taking their plea to applying for cash bail to whatever, somebody stands up and says, you don't allow me to be placed on record for the case person. I'm willing to help. So true, yeah. I mean, people are willing to help. So it does thank happen. Colleagues. It does happen. Mm. And I thank uh, my colleagues, lawyers, for, for doing that. But now this is where now NLAS should be able to be coordinating all these things. Absolutely, yes. Let's take a break. We'll continue this conversation shortly. 28 minutes to 8. We are uh, this morning discussing the National Legal Aid Service, established by the Legal Aid Act. Um, just in fulfillment of what the Constitution says, that you have a right, you have a right, fundamental rights and freedoms, you have a right to access to justice, you've got a right to fair trial, you have a right to have access to an advocate, and if you don't have access to an you can't afford an advocate, you have a right to be assigned an advocate by the court. This is why the National Legal Aid Service was established. Its chairman currently is William Musio Kikimanti, he's the board chair, and we also have State Council Caleb Kisuya, who works in the secretariat of this and he'll also come in and tell us now practically how they receive a case how they go through a case how they then make sure that we benefit from it mm -hmm. we'll be back shortly good morning this is the situation room the only way to start your day It's 15 degrees in Nairobi, 16 and cloudy in Nakuru, going to highs of 26. And we'll see highs of 25 in a mostly cloudy area. 16, it's 15 and cloudy in Eldoret with highs of 25. And we're looking into a sunny Mombasa now, going to highs of 31. And it's the same in Malindi, going to highs of 31. 20 and sunny in Kisumu with highs of 29. And 18 and sunny in Kakamega, going to highs of 30. It's partly uh, sunny in Kampala with highs of 28 and lows of 20. And we'll see cloudy conditions for now in Dar es Salaam, going to highs of 29. Johannesburg is sunny at nine at 17 with highs of 27 while at 27 it's mostly sunny in Mogadishu going to highs of 32. Addis Ababa at 15 is sunny with highs of 23 and looking into a cloudy Lagos at 26 will we see highs of 34. After the rains Kinshasa is now cloudy at 25 going to highs of 34. Very nice, much 
to our music. It really took me back to my dreams and I can just feel you again and enjoy the vibes. Spice. I'm a big listener of Spice FM. You play the best music. Right, look at the Thicker Super Highway. It's um, traffic coming in from that junction of Altering through towards the city. As you then approach Limuru Road and then get into the city as well, that's very busy. It's a bit busy on Kambu, as, uh, Kambu Road, but traffic is not doing the thing just yet. We're getting into traffic hour now. Let's see what happens. As you're coming off the Eastern Bypass, that route then takes you round the loop back onto Outer Ring. That's busy coming in from Cabanas and also touching on North Airport Road. So that's probably one of the busier parts that we'll see today. Okay, let's keep an eye on things as they progress through traffic hour. Talk to us in the meantime. Spice FM, KE on X, hashtag The Situation Room. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings, done right. 94.4, Spice FM, Nairobi. Chairman William Musioki and Caleb Kisuya, who is a state council. Caleb, your chairman has said that you've been working since establishment. I mean, you've been handling cases. You have several cases that you've even currently have take us through maybe one of them how does it happen so when you go before someone goes before a judicial officer and the court then says you need legal aid how does it get to you how do you take it up how do you take it to the conclusion yeah we necessarily don't get those uh, clients from the court mm -hmm. some are referred to us through prisons others are referred through children's officer others are just working clients who have heard about endless mm -hmm. And in one of our mandates uh, ensuring that people are assessing justice, we have conducted what we call legal aid clinics in different countries and most of the marginalized. We have been in Marsabit, we have been in Mandera, Isiolo, Tana River, besides these other towns. Mm -hmm. Now, we also have our own form where a client can fill and ask for legal aid. But because judicial officers have the information, and when they see a particular case and they see as a, a substantial injustice will be meted, they usually write to us or they tell that person if he has been given bail or bond, go to these offices. Okay. So those who have been referred or those who just come in, we handle that case, we screen them to ensure they deserve legal aid. Mm. One of the challenges we, 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 we face is that uh, you'll get a, a good banker, a manager, once legal aid in matters of child support. Because he has been sued with one of the ladies he has sired with, you see. <laughs> now, when you, when you look at his pay slip, this somebody wants a six figure. But they don't want to pay legal fees because they, they, there's that notion that uh, lawyers are expensive. Right. And when a person hears about National Legal Aid Service, yes. it's like, I better go there, they do it for me for free, rather than pay. Mm. And that is why when you look at our act, it says that uh, somebody should be earning 30000 and below to at least get... Uh, legal aid to qualify to qualify mm -hmm. so how do you screen them uh, we screen them first by uh, they, they, they get interviewed mm -hmm. when they come most of those are kings because those who are referred from prison and cell automatically the information is known mm -hmm. but those who are who come like walk-ins uh, you just have a formal interview and sometimes we use our skills to ascertain whether they qualify or not because they are always informed that when you go there uh, kindly pretend or you can, the others even cry in our office just because someone doesn't want to, to be told they don't qualify. Mm. Cryers in tears dropping or yeah, cryers in wailing. <laughs> or both. both. <laughs> <laughs> For added effect. So others, other, others are, are also clients mm. because uh, even by giving you, by advising you legally, mm. that is a form of legal aid. Mm. Mm. Others come and you give them advice which they appreciate and which helps them proceed with their matter. Mm. Okay. Yes, but others, if you come, you, we tell you the opposition, if, if you qualify, you'll get that aid. If you don't qualify, we tell you the reasons why, because there are more indigent, vulnerable, and marginalized persons who deserve that aid rather than you. Mm. Yeah. What's the scope of the representation? And I ask this because can somebody be <coughs> guaranteed? You know, a, a lot of folks I would imagine then who come, apart from the folks who are trying to, you know, cry and wail and maybe they, mm. they cannot and afford representation mm. what's the guarantee that somebody who comes to you who's desperate will then be represented fully as somebody who was paying top dollar for representation 
to answer that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, um, there's this is notion that because you're getting something for free, then maybe is a is a, a lower package. Is a lower yes. package. But now, actually, our mandate is to make sure that we we give quality service. We make sure that you're accessible. We we, we give our best. Like we would if you're doing with a with, with a paying client, and that is our mandate. That is our mandate. So um, there's that guarantee. Our mm -hmm. lawyers are, you know lawyers like any other mm. and they are committed to work like they would be if they're working in a private uh, law firm okay yeah why did you take up this job um my you, you as william, <laughs> <laughs> Me yes, as william. You. <laughs> I, I want to understand what you're saying because he's the chair yeah i'm the chair yes yes For one uh, yes because you could have done many other things yes why did you take up this one uh, uh, i'm trained as a lawyer from you know yeah, that's uh, nice. it's, 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 it's all it's uh, all i know one number no, two it's, uh, not, it's not all you know <laughs> I but could not be a butcher. I could not be a butcher, but for now, I yes. mean, um, mm. law practice yes. and practice of law is what I've known all my life. But again, I, I get where you're coming from. I could have, you know, sat in my office and uh, enjoyed my private life. And there's a lot of satisfaction, and uh, it's uh, it's one thing I'm realizing from also colleagues where um, you 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 do. I would call it free work, but if, if you give back to society, mm. it's very it's very fulfilling. It's very satisfying. A law, we are told many times that it's not a, it's not a business, it's a profession. And uh, what distinguishes it from other, you know, money-making things is that uh, there's an element of being immersed in what you're trained and doing justice and giving back to the society. I, I am very lucky. I, I didn't... I didn't sort of fight to be the chairman. Of course, there was an element of luck. I was appointed by His Excellency the President. Thank you very much for, for that appointment. And um, I, I, I consider this an opportunity for me to, 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 to give back to the society. Mm. Siti, why did you ask that question? Mm -hmm. I asked that question because mm. everything that I've heard so far is there is more demand than the supply for the services that we're speaking of. Mm. And when you're talking about people who clearly uh, financially, socially are unable to fend for themselves, there is a selflessness that one needs to exhibit. There is, one has to be a certain type of person who looks at life in a certain way to be able to do this sort of work. Mm. It's more like a calling. It's, it's, it's not something for the faint-hearted. Because uh, the reason why many people endure their clients is because the clients are paying. So, so, so it, it doesn't really matter how horrible the person is. When you think of oh, the money is paying you, that horror recedes. Mm. You see, from my experience uh, at Endless, yes, if you are not passionate about uh, helping people, yes, you won't work there. Yeah, and uh, he can confirm to me. Others come even on uh, internship and pro bono. They leave mm. because yeah. they they see what they didn't expect. Which is what? Yes, it's like. Uh, People come, mm. serious cases. Mm. I've handled that. We do, we do mediations. Right. And in fact, we have like, uh, done like a thousand mediations successfully. Mm -hmm. More so on children matters. Because these are matters of maintenance. You, you, you invite the father, the mother. Of course, the mother is the complainant. You mm. come, you enter into a parental responsibility agreement. It works. But now you have a situation whereby uh, the father comes. He tells you, I'm jobless. I lost my job from COVID. This woman is here with a kid mm. who is sick. You end up giving money to take that kid to the hospital because the child is sick yes. today. Yes, and they have come for mediation. Right, she's seeking justice. Mm. She, the kid is also sick. What do you do? So you can go home very disappointed, mm. very heartbroken. Others will go one way. Mm. But Caleb, there's only so much that you can do as an individual mm. in that case because yes, you are giving out of your own, you know, benevolent heart. But how should such cases be handled? I mean, when somebody has come in there, like you're saying. They are two desperate parents mm -hmm. and they are tussling over how do we support this child. At that point, the child is vulnerable, the child is sick. The, in the interest of the child who requires this medical service, this money should be coming from the endless account, shouldn't mm -hmm. it? But that's where now the problem is that you don't have money. Yeah. But, but even more than that, uh, from everything that I've heard about uh, this service it mm. goes beyond what is even budgeted even if they had a budget the demands will go beyond the budget so unless someone is tuned and uh, unless someone has accepted mm. that this is something that's why i use the word calling 
uh, you, you you will burn out. It's, 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 it's not something you'll be able to do for long. I, I agree entirely, but I agree entirely. It, it happens because um, some of the matters actually that come to offices say don't work there. He does, but uh, you won't even deem them to be strictly legal issues. I'll give you an example. I they told me a story of. Um, Remember, you're talking about the indigent, the marginalized people, yep. you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, somebody comes to the office and says, uh, the man he's been living, she's been living with, has been taken by another lady, mm. living in the same place in Madari. Mm. And the help she needs from her office is for us to help her, to help her go and get a man back. Mm. Uh, and not just that, to also help her to change her ID from a father's name to the man's name. Yeah. I mean, and this is somebody so agitated and they need advice. Yeah, mm. they need counseling. And, and I agree with you. I mean, when you get a matter like that as a lawyer, where do you begin from? And it takes much more than just the law business like we know it. Mm. Mm. And uh, I appreciate what our staff do. And, um, and uh, there's a likelihood to be burned out. Some of the issues that you deal with, if cases like this were to go to court, you can imagine now we are talking of backlog mm. where cases are there and nothing happens. And yeah. We deal with them at that level. Sure. Some of these people just need to hear mm. somebody talk to them. And that's where structures come in, Absolutely. William. Because, yeah. you mm. see, what the National Aid Service is doing, mm. and especially if you look at those cases, mm. this is what the alternative justice system is also doing yes. in various other ways. Mm. You know, if you've got just the use AJS courts that mm. have been established, mm. uh, the judicial officers and judges will tell you the kind of cases that they deal with. Mm. Even those that deal with murder cases, mm. where you're j basically looking at how horrible somebody has been treated mm. and judges always tell us i mean a case that comes before them and they're looking at the details and they're like oh my goodness but you constantly you know this is mm. the job that you have to do mm. i want to come back into the structure of this mm. because right now um as i get it there's an issue with it being under the office of the attorney general mm. because only the budget of the attorney general's office will help you do the job that you're supposed to be doing mm. and yet you should be having more right there is the judiciary fund which funds the judiciary and we've seen for example the coordination between the judiciary and the various um tribunals that have been established mm. tribunals established tribunals appointed by various ministers in the various of ministries but they work under the judiciary can this work that way can the national legal aid service work in conjunction with the judiciary to get part of the funding from the judiciary fund we could actually and um uh, we are in the process of setting up our own fund mm -hmm. the legal aid fund is part of the mechanisms that have been um, uh, contemplated in the legal aid act we cannot give a service without money and the way to deal with money is to set up the fund um we so what does the law say about the fund? When you set up the fund, yeah. how should money get into the fund? Yes, uh, money one, the first uh, uh, person to contribute, of course, should be the, the national government. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping that once the fund is operational, they are going to put money in it. Uh, the second one, uh, we expect money from, uh, from donors. And uh, as it were, like I said earlier, in fact, we already have donors helping us at the moment mm -hmm. even without the fund this uh, system where we are getting money and being able to work uh, stakeholders people you know of goodwill coming in and saying that uh, i'm willing to i uh, the meeting i had with the honorable cj she she assured us that uh, she has a lot of um, friends who have also been asking what is it that we can do and she's willing to help us also source mm -hmm. and again here look um you understand the enormity. I agree with what Mr. Muga is saying. The, the challenge is big. Money seems inadequate, and uh, we'll be publicizing once the fund is set up to put in money so that we are able to meet the demand. Beyond the legal services, yes. Since you seek to have people volunteer, mm. what about counseling services? Because clearly, mm. by the time somebody uh, is a clearly disadvantaged member of society. Their problems usually they are, th th that they carry with them are sometimes even greater than the legal problem that has brought them there. Mm. Or it is that problem that has brought about this legal issue that has brought them before you. Yeah, yeah. Do you seek, do you have other plans to have supportive services like mm. the one I've just mentioned? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sort of like 
but trust whatever it is that you're doing. Yeah. Do you know part of the work we do, people also confuse our work to just appear in court. But even channeling problems in our own assessment where we feel people will get help is mm. part of doing Legal our work. Day. And we actually do that. There are people who come to us, uh, the case I've given, and in your own assessment you feel this is not strictly a legal issue. Mm. This is a matter for a counsellor. This is a matter for the chief. This is a matter for the pastor. And we do that. And in fact, even before sending them out we have we have a uh, we have a counselor we have people trained in counseling services in our office mm -hmm. again not enough i think at the moment you have only one person mm -hmm. very good and um some people like i said they just need to have a listening ear and uh, they call back later to say i've seen a post on facebook somebody saying they were the verge of this and uh, having come to our office and speaking to an officer they felt better and uh, the issue is gone yeah so it's not strictly i agree with you legal issues but part of our work is to channel those energies to where we feel they can be deflated in a, in a good way. Mm. But I agree it's something that needs to be expanded because the needs are many. For sure, at the moment there's a lot, there's needs and there's also financial burden yeah. that's there. And sometimes we find that solutions come about as a forced position. Mm. So um, one would assume that representation of NLAS is around the country. Mm. Um, should be or should be around mm. the country. Where do we have mm. where do we have endless branches around the country? Uh, we have endless in Nairobi. Yeah, we are at a Kitangicha and you at a KCS house at Mamangina Street. Yeah, we also have uh, endless office in Mombasa. Mm -hmm. We are in Kisumu, mm. Nakuru, Eldoret. Uh, we are on the verge of operationalizing three marginalized offices in Isiolo. Mm. Mm. Martha Beat, Darissa, even in Mandera, and mm. there already staff have been uh, deployed there. Okay. Wait, how many staff do you currently have? Currently, we are about 25. 25 in all those stations? Yes. Out of the 25, 10 lawyers. Yeah. Did I get it right? Yes. Yeah. So, 10 lawyers, and in all these areas Nairobi, Kisumu, Mombasa, Isiolo, Eldoret, Martha Beat. Mandela. With 10 lawyers. Yes. And 25 staff. The other 15, I'm assuming, are administrative staff. Yeah, yeah. Aye. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> if I may add, uh -huh. what the chairman told you that the, the AG office is decentralizing yes. to areas, that, I think 37 counties where it was not present. Mm. Mm. And from the AG's office, they have deployed staff to these other counties for endless. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, uh, so, in a nutshell, well, mm. we are currently operational in five counties. Mm. It's mentioned to them. Mm. We have offices. They've been operating since around 2016. The other seven, to make it 12, are in the process of being set up. And uh, the only challenge we have is, again, the human resource, because we have everything. I mean, uh, the donors have been very kind to us, the European Union. Um, we even have vehicles, so I'll tell you, uh, mm. brand new vehicles <laughs> waiting mm. to be deployed to help people in those areas. But again, um, until we get uh, the staff. Okay, so the staff is a thing. Yeah. And because my question was going to then go towards communication of the availability of this service to people. Mm. Um, I'm sure you're inundated with requests mm. from folks to be able to represent them. Um, but I still do think that there's a lot, if we talked about the majority of people who are unrepresented and cannot afford it. Mm that if you were to communicate about the availability of these services, then th you would be bursting at the yeah, seams yeah, in terms yeah. of who would come. Yeah. Um, so do you communicate about this service? Or is it just something that we say, well, we're going to keep what we're doing yeah. for now without talking much more about it? Because then if you have 25 people around the country today mm. and it's not communicated on such a wide level, what's to happen if more people knew about this service? Yeah, well... Yes, I agree. If if we are to uh, publicize our activities, obviously we've been inundated, mm. and and that is not to mean that we keep quiet. We have been doing quite a lot. In fact, this week, and one of the reasons we're here, mm. we intend this to be our legal aid um, week, and we want it to come later on Friday with an legal aid day. Mm -hmm. We want people to know. Mm. It's one thing for people to know that we exist. It's another thing for us to be able to give the service. Our idea is to make sure that, um, for a start. Part of sensitizing people about their rights is to know that their rights exist. Mm. Whether we'll be able to achieve, we'll deal with it when the time comes. Our hope is that you're going to be able to do it. Yeah. One of the ways you're dealing with it is to work with partners. Uh, one of the 
the things you've been doing, the difficult bit where you need an advocate is where there's actual court representation mm-hmm. because not anybody can go. Mm-hmm. But you're working with partners, you're working with the paralegals. And the paralegals are these people who are trained to, not necessarily lawyers. Mm-hmm. And, and, and they have an idea about the law and, and, uh, and the advice. And, and, and look, some people get sorted out by merely getting the advice. It mm-hmm. doesn't have to come from the qualified advocates. How are the legals trained? There is um, a curriculum that we are also supposed to develop. We've already come up with one. It's supposed to be um, agreed upon with the Council for Legal Education. Uh, somebody raised an issue whether it's the Council for Legal Education or the National Qualifications <laughs> Authority. It's a small issue it's trying to <laughs> trying to deal with. Mm. But um, we, these are some of the issues they're dealing with. Our mm. act is very young. Mm. I mean, there's no reason. But uh, those are some of the things we're if dealing it's with. young, there's an advantage mm. there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. We are trying to work with the Council for Legal Education to come up with a uniform curriculum so that you not have people from all over the place saying mm. they have an idea about the law. And not just training. We are also going to accredit. Remember, so the we, certification. Yes, yeah, mm. certification. We are mm. going to make sure that uh, we accredit the people who are going to give the, the service so that in areas where we cannot be because of our limited capacity, we have people, and we've done mapping. Uh, we identified who are the legal providers in areas like Trukana, like Masabit, like um, Narok. Already that has been done. So that um, once we get an, an issue from that, uh, that area, then we are able to call our person to mm. see whether there's an issue they can deal with. They can deal. If they cannot deal with it, then they refer. We also mentioned that you're trying to get advocates. And um, I'll be visiting our new president also to try and encourage advocates to to take up this thing. So that if you're yeah. based in Nara, for example, yeah. and we have a legal paralegal there with a client and they're stuck, then they can be referred to the advocate and whatever issue they have. I'm a little concerned though, yeah. because when you talk about a curriculum, I'm thinking of the issues that you've seen as being prevalent in the cases that you deal with. Mm. So it's a pointer as to what one could refer to as common problems. Yeah. And then there's what causes them, what brings them about. Mm. Now, having this in mind, and I'm thinking of the curriculum that you are setting up, mm. I'm asking myself the question, do you bear these things in mind when setting up the curriculum? Because beyond just offering the legal service that a legal aid or a mm. paralegal would offer, mm. what about understanding some of the social economic situations that they're in and the problems that arise therein, so that this paralegal can actually, beyond the legal, can actually steer, just like you can, the people who come to them in the right direction, understand, because they've been trained to understand and to cope with whatever it is that that person will come with. Mm-hmm. So the question is, what should be content in that curriculum? I'm asking exactly what sort of people do you have when helping you write that curriculum, and is that curriculum looking into what you found as some of the common issues that bring about the problem that you deal with with this set of individuals in yeah, our communities. Yeah. Um, Eric, you mentioned about uh, AGS, mm. for example, a, a mediation. Already, I, I'm sure you read in the media every other day about uh, people being invited to be trained on mediation. Yes. It's a very simple thing. And mediation, basically, is the whole idea of bringing people together. You know, alternative justice, we have conciliation. Mm. We have... Uh, uh, we have um, um, which is the other one? There, there, there are several AGS. Arbitration. Like, uh, arbitration. Mediation, yes. Oh, yeah. And uh, they do not take the, the rigors of legal training. So that if a matter can be dealt at that level, where it can be resolved through mediation, through conciliation, but then if it gets to issues which are beyond the capacity of a paralegal, that's when now you're saying, please push it so, to... So you do mediation, but do you have people who specifically focus on mediation? Uh, yes, we do. Yes, yeah. we do. Yeah. Yes, we do. Mm. 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 As you conclude, mm. you tell us about this week. So you're saying that you want this mm. to be the Legal Aid Week. Mm. All right. So what do you want people to know? We want to know, I want people to know about the existence of the National Legal Aid Service. Mm-hmm. We are opening now the <laughs> Pandora's box. Mm-hmm. We, we, we do not want to duck away from our responsibility. We do not want to say because we do not have the capacity, <laughs> then let's keep quiet until we get capacity. Mm. Let people know that there is a legal aid scheme mm. uh, established under the law. Uh, the small issues we're dealing with are our issues, they are internal, they are surmountable. Mm. We are able to work. 
even dis even you know despite the, the the small challenges we have and uh, we, with time we are going to resolve them perhaps you could ask why we picked on this this week and mm. not uh, another date um I said at the start that uh, the act was uh, promulgated uh, on 26th of April 2016, right. and we thought 26th of uh, April would be a good day to make it a day to, to mark your birthday. Yeah, exactly. With yeah. letting more people know yeah. that this baby is how many years old now? Eight. Uh, eight, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Congratulations, and yes, it's an important conversation to have. Please come again, well, and let's so create more and more awareness about this, yep. and also to know how, so people can know the kind of cases to bring to you how to know that they qualify to come to you and also you know success stories are a good thing to tell Caleb Kisuya is a state council and William Musioki is the board chair of the National Legal Aid Service they've been our guests this is the Legal Aid Week get to know more about them it's 8 a.m. time for news says that the fatal accident which occurred in the Silanange area saw a Subaru Forester colliding head-on with a Toyota Sienta while trying to overtake. Police say that the Sienta carrying six passengers was heading towards Molot while the Subaru was heading towards Narok. Kenyans will have another opportunity to remember and mourn the former KDF Chief of Defense Forces, General Francis Ogola, on Friday this week. Speaking during his burial, his daughter Lorna Cheng described her father as an exceptional inspiration and godly man. He worked as if he was working for God. He had an audience of one. Anything he was doing, he was working for God and God alone. And we saw it. Let me tell you, this man, when I was in, already in college and Joey was about to go into college, he went back to university in Nairobi with my peers. I'm not sure about you, but I wouldn't be that humble. I'm not sure I could make it with Gen Z in class. And he was in class with my classmates. Agola's son, Joel Rabuku, asked Kenyans to expect more stories of the general's life on Friday. On Friday during his memorial, we have very many stories about general we should have everyone laughing for very many minutes. So hopefully you can join us then as well. General Ogola was buried in Gear Village, Sierra County, 72 hours after he died in a chopper he was traveling in alongside other officials crashed in Kaben, Maraquet East on Thursday last week. The University of Nairobi students have now issued a 48-hour notice to their management over the institute's unconducive learning environment. Speaking in a press conference, the student leadership has has raised concern over the unbearable state of their campus hostels, demanding that they be renovated immediately. As the government campus, I'm here to deeply express my concern and my disappointment by appearing conditions of the students' hostels by the University of Nairobi management. The current set of these facilities are not com compelling to the well-being and the safety of students, but they also not reflect the they reflect the poor conditions of the institution's management. It's very unacceptable to the students being subject to the filthy and sanitary living conditions, which include san uh, inadequate sanitation, fewer hygiene standards, and dilapidated infrastructure. The leadership says that the rainy season has made the condition worse as some of the roofs leak and sewer lines get blocked. Uh, the students are experiencing a very great problem in terms of uh, 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 the drainage conditions. Uh, their rooms are leaking from the roofs and we find a lot of flooded rooms around the school. We are training doctors to treat, uh, to treat, to treat patients. We are, uh, we, are, we, are, we are training architects to go out there and design our environment. We are not training deep sea divers. 
UDA party officials led by Secretary General Cleophus Malala have received several electronic gadgets that will aid in conducting the forthcoming grassroots elections. The gadgets, which include tablets, were received at the Jomokinata International Airport. Speaking after receiving the consignment, Malala affirmed the party's readiness to hold the elections, which are set to start on Friday. This comes ahead of a planned meeting between the party's national election board with all aspirants scheduled for today to address any concerns. And finally, in the international scene, a baby girl was delivered from the womb of a Palestinian killed along with her husband and daughter by an Israeli attack in the Gaza city of Rafah where 19 people died overnight in intensified strikes. Palestinian health officials say the baby weighing 1.4 kilograms and, and delivered in an emergency C-section was stable and improving gradually. That's the news why I'm Lea Ubaga. One oh two point five Spice FM Kisumu. If a lion shows you its teeth, it doesn't mean it likes you. <laughs> it doesn't mean it likes you. Mm. It won't start. <laughs> <laughs> a liar calls as witness one who is either dead or far away. Say it in Ben lo, nin tin te, yenin ter, ayu makati karikta. You know this uh, character called a uh, liar. He has disturbed people. Mm -hmm. So when you tell him, uh, who are your witnesses? He will take you to a place where it is difficult to verify. For someone like me who sweats uh, a lot, <laughs> I cannot survive there. <laughs> you know, sweating is biblical. <laughs> and you must blame it on Adam. <laughs> it's after 8 o'clock. Traffic is busy in the city this morning, you know, but all manageable for a Monday. Uh, people coming off the drama over the weekend with many roads flooded here and there because of the rains and trying to now make their way into the city carefully, of course. On the Sika Superhighway, it's heavy getting into the CBD, but manageable. Uh, folks are staying away from Rilo Dingaway, as they've been told. Well, you know, just being careful a little bit here and there. On Jogo Road, there's traffic getting out towards Landis and then on towards Kamkunji. And then it is busy um, a little bit on James Gishiro as you then get towards Waiakiwe. Uh, we'll watch out for that uh, getting into the city. We're in traffic hour, but it's all manageable, like we said. Just a shout out, just in case anything does go out of whack. We'll talk Spice FM, K E on X, hashtag the Situation Room. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, Pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, newshound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is Seven the Situation eight. Room, the Thank only way to start your day. Conversation. On to the third hour now on YouTube, on Facebook, on KTN Home, on Spice FM, on Radio Garden and other uh, digital and online radio platforms. Kenya's biggest conversation broadcasts every weekday morning, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. And you can catch up with the conversations later on all our streams on YouTube and Facebook. You can just catch up with the conversations later. Our next conversation is going to be about the climate change and what the world is doing about it, and particularly one embassy in Nairobi. The Embassy of the Kingdom of Belgium. Good the morning. ambassador is uh, Peter Mardens. He is here with us. Good morning, Balozi. Morning. How are you? Very well. Welcome to the hot seat of the situation. Thank you very much. Now that we're here talking about uh, climate change, 
the mm. hot seat makes a lot of sense. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you'll tell us about... It's more like a wet seat this morning, but okay. My kids will say all dad jokes. Okay, like, like, <laughs> <really. Don't. laughs> That's a good way to start. <laughs> you, are, you are with right company. <laughs> 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 we all get that kind of reaction. Yeah, I heard you guys laughing this morning about the weather report. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unstoppable laughter just because you were reading all the regions and counties. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Balozi, to welcome you to the conversation, CT will give you the day's proverb. Okay. Every week he goes into one African country, mines proverbs from that country, uh, puts them through the river, takes them to the Atlantic, <laughs> then finds a boy of the them here. This week, the country is? We are in the Republic of Congo, mm -hmm. otherwise known as Congo Brazzaville. Brazzaville yeah, mm -hmm. I heard that. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Yes, we will state the proverb first in Lingala and then give the English translation of it. Okay. Mbula eba ngaka mokonzi te. Mbula eba ngaka mokonzi te. Yes, now, what that means simply is <laughs> the rain does not fear the authority of a king the rain doesn't fear the authority of a king yes somebody now, who comes from a monarchy <laughs> would see this <laughs> they wouldn't see the human this will they? <laughs> but it also, rains on everybody right yes it does mm. <laughs> what's the interpretation of it what do you think it rains on everybody is? no one no one is uh, everyone's equal no one's above the law no one is spared mm -hmm. everybody here is equal to exactly okay you know, we see ambassadors and uh, 1K number that, you know, you drive. Mm. But then the, the, the numbers before that yeah. tell us also the relationship between our country and your country. What's the number on your number plate? Number 30. 30? Yeah. Ah. You're actually, actually, it's, it's, it's interesting. The, um, I, was, I, I, was reading, um, <clears throat> I was reading some documents the other day. It was around this time in 1964, so that's exactly 60 years ago, mm. that the first Belgian ambassador presented his credentials and the diplomatic relations at the level of ambassador were established. I think it was 26 April. So it's been exactly 60 years. Mm. This is it. You're marking 60 years yeah. of uh, the embassy of the Kingdom of Belgium in Nairobi. Well, we, we've been here since the 20s. There was a consul general of Belgium in, 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 in 1925. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've, we've been around for a while. Mm. What's the relationship between Kenya and the Kingdom of Belgium? Oh, we're just, I mean, what is, what it, is it, like I said, it's What been, is it that we enjoy from each other? It's, it, it's, it's a relationship that's been going on for decades. We, like I said, we've been present as Belgium here in Kenya since the 1920s. We have, we've had an embassy here since independence. Um, our, the, 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 the first ambassador presented credentials four months into Kenya's independence. We have, like, like I said, number 30. Mm. Um, there's a, a diaspora of a couple of thousand Kenyans in Belgium. There's a diaspora of a couple of hundreds of Belgians here in Kenya. Um, we, we have a relationship that goes back, that goes back for a long, long time. Mm. And we've been solid friends forever. Okay. And when did Peter Martins present his papers as uh, Once ambassador, a extraordinary plenipotentiary? There you go. <laughs> uh, minister plenipotentiary and ambassador extraordinary. That's mm -hmm. the, uh, don't, 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 don't use thing. that too often. Yeah, but, uh, it's a long <laughs> thing. Balozi is enough. Uh, uh, 1 September 21. Yep. So about two and a half years ago. Two and a half years. Yeah. Ah, you've, you, you've known Kenya. I, I, yeah. Um, I have a bit of a story. My my dad was one of my predecessors, mm. so my dad was ambassador here in the 70s. Uh, funny thing, um, in a kingdom it can happen because you know in a kingdom you have a succession father to son in the head of state, mm. but in a republic, never that an ambassador presents credentials to the son of the president to whom the ambassador's father also presented credentials. Oh, it was interesting, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. But even more interesting... Father to Jomo Kenyatta, son yeah. to Uhuru Kenyatta. Is, is when the mm. son of that ambassador also went to school with the son of that president. That's true. That did you? Yeah, we did, yeah. We were classmates. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Say that classmates. again. Uhuru Kenyatta and I were classmates at St. Mary's in 1978 and 79. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. 
It's good to go to school. And you're both sons <laughs> of the <laughs> Well, that's, yeah. <laughs> there's there's a reason. Who, you never know who you might There's a reason there. to you go know. to school, right? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so you knew each other even by the time you were presenting your papers. Yeah. Like, yeah, oh, it was, Peter, it was, come here. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it was like that. And it was really funny to see, you know, both my colleagues from the embassy who, 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 who join in these ceremonies and the colleagues or the, the officials from the government who were looking at us going, what is going on? <laughs> It was hilarious. It really was. And you got into a, a bit of a St. Mary's chant. We did. <laughs> <laughs> we did. <laughs> okay. The Net Zero Embassy. Yeah. What is that? And why are you big on it? Well, um, you know what? You're, you're asking the question when I presented credentials, and that was in, in September of 21. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of... Uh, let me tell you a secret. One of the things an ambassador does when he arrives is starts talking to various groups of, of, of people, interlocutors. You know, you have the civil society, you have the politicians, you have other diplomats, and there's also a group of your own diaspora, of your own countrymen who live in the country. And, and one of the people I met at that point, uh, or a couple that I met at that point, were... Um, uh, uh, Loic Amado and, and Valerie Super, who run Embo River Camp in Masai Mara. And their USP, their unique selling proposal, is the fact that that camp is carbon neutral, net zero emissions camp in Masai Mara. And we went to visit, well, they came to the office, they told me the story. We went to the camp, we went and visited, and one of the things he does when they do when, when you visit the camp is they show you around their installations. They show you their solar panels and their batteries and their biodigesters, which create biogas to cook on, and the rainwater capture and the water recycling and the, and the vegetable gardens, the hydroponic vertical vegetable gardens, and, and his, uh, you know, two, uh, his four uh, electric safari vehicles, which he charges, by the way, mm -hmm. with solar energy. He has four electric safari vehicles, you know, the nine-passenger yeah. thing. Wow. They're all electric, and he charges them with solar power. Um, and I kept thinking to myself while walking around that camp, I said, but wait a minute, this infrastructure is the same as mine. Mm. He has a couple of tents, he has 40 people working for him, he has a couple of acres of land. I have an embassy with two buildings, I have 20 people working for me, I have a couple of cars. The infrastructure is the exact same. And I asked him, do you think we can do something like this at the embassy in Nairobi? And he came to take a look, and he saw the thousand square meters of roof, flat, which was perfect for the mm -hmm. solar panels. And he saw the garden had a, had a bit of an incline, so it was easy to collect and, and, and manage the, the water. And there was space enough to put up the vertical gardens, and there was space enough to put up the biodigesters. And he said, yeah, sure, let's try it. Mm -hmm. So I started pitching this to my colleagues back home and at the ministry in Brussels, and there's a couple of architects and engineers there who, th who thought it was a good idea, and who actually went and said, look, we've, we've, built, a, we've built an energy-neutral embassy in, in Kinshasa. We're building a, 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 a climate-neutral embassy, just the embassy building in Morocco. This could be the next step, because you're lucky you have both the embassy and the residents on the same piece of land, so it can be all our installations in Kenya mm. that we can make, you know, that we can strive towards carbon neutrality and start with net zero emissions. Mm. Um, and they found a pot of money in the, in, the, in the federal budget that they could tap into to, to pay for this. And so we started constructing it last October, and we started with the biodigesters and then put in the vertical gardens. Now we have the solar panels and the water recycling and the water capture. Mm. And so since... Uh, I think it's mid-February. The Belgian embassy has been working on a net zero emissions basis. Mm -hmm. Why is that important? Uh, well, well, first of all, it's it's important because of the fight against climate change. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's 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 easy to sit there and say the government has to do it all. The government has to put in the solar the the the, the solar parks, and the government has to put in the windmills and the geothermal. And you know, we don't have to worry about what we do as individuals right. in the fight against climate change. Well, that's not true. Uh, yes, the government has to put in the big systems, absolutely, but we as individuals have to do the same. We can't keep um, consuming energy the way we've been consuming energy. We can't keep wasting our water. We can't keep... Um, we, why not turn, you know, waste into energy that we can, that we can use as well, um, instead of just throwing it out and putting it in landfills. Mm. So, you know, everybody has to do his part. Um, and the reason why I think it's important for me as an embassy to have done this is as, as an example. I mean, if, if Loic and Valerie can do it in a camp out in Masai Mara, and I can do it in this very visible building 
in the middle of Nairobi, then every, everybody can do his bit. It doesn't have to be the whole thing. Eh? It doesn't have to be the whole system. Mm -hmm. You put in a solar panel or two, you, you put in a biodigester bag, which, all the, which by the way isn't all that expensive. Mm -hmm. You make sure you capture all your rainwater and use that rainwater, mm -hmm. if only to water your plants or water your garden or um, you know, use in your toilets, mm -hmm. even if only that. You're already making. You're already doing something important. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just the government that should be doing, or the, the public sector that should be doing this mm -hmm. stuff. You, you, we need to do it all as individuals as well. Where are some things cannot be measured in the short term, whereby you say, okay, look, um, we've brought in solar panels, so we're not mm -hmm. using um, electricity that mm -hmm. has to be generated one mm -hmm. way or another. What are some of the benefits or what are some of the changes that you've seen in the short time where certain things have been replaced by mm. others what are some of those that you've seen well i mean um i i um i think i, I we have monitoring systems on our on, on the whole uh, on the whole setup uh we've already um saved three and a half tons of co2 um, because of the solar panels and because of the biodigester that that allows us to use biogas instead of lpg in six months yeah Oh, okay. In four months, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, three and a half tons of CO two. How do you measure that? Uh, it, it, I mean, it, it's, it's uh, these how they measure it. Th these guys, these guys know know what the normal production of CO two is with with LPG and with and with electricity that's that's generated by uh, by fossil fuels, and they and they they come to the conclusion that that's not been generated by fossil; it's just been generated by solar. So, and then they they put that up on a on an on an app that's on the phone. Mm -hmm. I see. So what you're doing now, of course, with solarization is that you're not using grid power. Nope. Right? And, uh, and then you're recycling water. Yes. With the biodigester. Yes. And you're also able to harvest the water yes. and all those things. If I just look at, apart from saying that you've reduced on your electricity bills, mm -hmm. much, much of our power in this country is already green. That's true. So you really can, can you really say that, you know, by moving from... <laughs> Greed to solar, you've reduced carbon emissions. I, I have because of that that little bit that does get that does produce carbon, and because of the gas, the, the kind of gas that I use, and because of the water that I use myself without taking on city water. Um, but um, I think much more importantly, mm. uh, technically speaking, uh, and and this is this is something that that everybody needs to look at as well. I don't think Kenya's problem is power generation. Kenya's power problem is power distribution. That's why you have power cuts. Mm. So every, every entity that comes off the grid strengthens the grid and makes it more stable for the rest of us. Mm. Right. right. Don't forget that part as well. Right. Yeah. The embassy is uh, near Karura. It's actually mm -hmm. in Karura. Right? It's actually in Karura Forest. It's, it's, yeah. a, it's, it's beautifully located. Yeah, my garden, my, my garden is actually biologically part of the forest. Very nice. Mm. So when you look at the work that you've done here, if, if you were to just advise, say, other companies, other homes, other embassies mm -hmm. to, to go the same route, what would the net impact be? What do you see as a bigger impact here? Well, that's like I was saying. I mean, nothing, not everything needs to be done by, by, by government or the public sector. Mm -hmm. Every individual can do his bit. Uh, and even the smallest bit is 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 uh, will already have an impact, even if you just capture your rainwater, even if you just put in a biodigester, even if you just put in a vertical, a vertical vegetable garden and produce it yourself. The, the, the two two little points that I want to make on the ver on the on the biodigester and on the and on the vertical gardens. Mm. Uh, so the biodigester uh, turns um, organic waste into into gas, mm -hmm. biogas that you can cook with. Mm. My wife and I live, live, our kids are back home, so it's just the two of us, plus, plus you know, the, 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 the staff, that doesn't produce enough to cook everything we need to, to produce, that doesn't produce gas to cook everything that we need to have cooked. Mm -hmm. uh, so, we actually went to uh, a, a supermarket down the street, the, uh, the on the way supermarket down the street on, in, in, on Muthaiga Road, and they're, they're, they are allowing us to take away their unsold vegetable produce, mm -hmm. and we turn that into gas. So it's not just us; it's also a community thing. Mm. Um, and then the the thing about the 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 the, the vertical gardens is, is is also actually pretty cool. Three generations ago, the average plot, you know, father of a family had an av the average plot was about ten acres. Mm. 
and he had four or five kids. So all of a sudden, that 10 acres became two. And they had four or five kids, so that two acres became half an acre. Mm -hmm. How do you solve that? How does a father keep feeding his family? You go vertical. Mm -hmm. And if you can, if you, by the way, if you can do that with recycled materials, you're, you're not only solving the problem of, of, of you know, um, producing your own food rather than doing it on an industrial scale, you're also solving, solving, addressing the social problem of ever smaller sizes of plots for a family. Mm. Okay. So, I mean, obviously, usually, um, most times when you see something working is then when you're convinced that uh, um, it can actually be something that can be adopted for others. You know, mm -hmm. development begets development, as mm -hmm. we always say. Um, so, one of the things then that would be a hindrance to a lot of people would be a challenge would be the cost of, mm -hmm. you know, getting some of these things done. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? Um... The, the 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 cost for us, but again, it's a it's a it's a big system because sure. it's two buildings and it's you know thirty people yes. that, that that live off it. And the the cost is actually quite reasonable. Mm -hmm. It's 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 around three hundred thousand U.S. dollars mm -hmm. for everything, mm -hmm. for everything. All the solar panels, all the biogas, all the the, the new water capture and recycling systems. Mm -hmm. Everything mm -hmm. uh, on a on 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 six acres of land. Right, and again. You know, you don't need to do this. You don't. Not everybody needs to do everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, one one system, you, one one biogas system, or a vertical garden, or just some gutters, so you capture your rainwater in a in a in a sim tank. Or one solar panel, for example. Or one solar panel just to to to, to keep your fridge going, or yeah. to or to power the family's, you know, electronics. Yes. That that that's enough. That's mm -hmm. a start. Um, you know, I mean, here in, 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 in this part of the world, you see people building houses layer by layer of bricks, mm, right? Mm. Out in, you know, you, you see houses coming up really slowly by, by the, the amount of bricks that they can, well, why not this, this as well? Why not this kind of an investment do that the same way? Mm. Something that, uh, as you're talking about recycling of water, and I'm thinking of this rainy season that we have, mm -hmm. and I'm looking at the stormwater drainage. Yeah. It collects a lot of it water. It does. The technology you speak of that enabled you to achieve what you have, mm. can it be used with storm water? Of course. Yeah, we, that's that's exactly what we do. I have I have three big tanks in. We built three big tanks in the in the on the on the embassy's plot. We have uh, close to a hundred thousand liters, mm. uh, and the water that comes off the roofs goes into these tanks. Um, gets mixed in with borehole and gets mixed in with with city water when necessary those three sources of water all get filtered and we use that in the house then the water goes into the used water uh, system mm -hmm. and it and that gets then used to uh, to irrigate both the garden and the vegetable gardens by the way did you did you hear me say used water Yes, I heard you say used Not water. Waste water. Mm. Yes, because yes. you don't waste <laughs> water. <laughs> shall, shall we so, start so using? So they, so they use, used water. So the used of, water is reused. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah, never yeah. wasted. It's not wasted, and that's why it's not wastewater. <laughs> you keep reusing it. Yeah. You know, this conversation has been taking place in the country for years mm -hmm. now you know and and encouraging even in terms of regulations coming in place and saying if you have a three bedroom house you must think about that's, solarizing your shower water exactly okay and that's a regulation already in place but or capturing your rainwater or even capturing your rainwater is also part of regulations mm -hmm. that are in place but then you find like people are not doing that much mm -hmm because of of course the barrier will be the costs mm, okay capturing the rainwater doesn't cost much that's a couple of gutters on on your roof into a tank perhaps. into a tank mm -hmm. that's really not expensive right and you know the more and i i agree if if you look at five or ten years ago solar panels and solar solar energy systems were prohibitively expensive i agree but i mean we you you must admit that right now that's no longer the case, or less the case. I'm not going to say it's no longer the case, because for most people it's in Kenya, it probably is going to be prohibitively expensive, I agree. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's less so than it was, than it was five or ten years ago. Uh, and the more people install it, mm -hmm. the less prohibitive it will become. And it's a question of time. It's a question of time. In the meantime, yep. 
in the meantime, it's good that we're in Kenya, where 90 plus percent of your energy is uh, is is produced in a sustainable fashion. Mm. So you know you're 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 reinforcing each other. The public sector is reinforcing what private citizens can and and should do. Mm. And my role in that is just simply to you know be an example and and hope that 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 people see what I've done, see what we've done. Uh, it's not just me; it's my colleagues at the embassy, it's my colleagues in. Um, at the ministry in Brussels, yep. and it's my wife who's had six months of fundies walking around the house. <laughs> 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 oh, I hear everybody laughing when I say that. She'll be happy to hear that. <laughs> that, 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 that you've understood what she's gone through. Yeah, we all see it. <laughs> six months of fundies in the house. Yeah. Uh, the, yes, it, mm. it's, it's, it's something, yes. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's labor intensive and it's a lot of it work. It is, but it's so worth it. All of it is. But well, let me ask uh, one question, Your Excellency. The the technology that we speak of. Mm -hmm. You said you've had help from the ministry. Mm -hmm. My foreign ministry. Yes, your foreign ministry. Have does the Belgian government mm -hmm. have? No, let, let me revise it. Are the organizations within Belgium? Mm -hmm who specialize in doing the sort of work that you have done. There's a reason why I ask. Okay. The partnership that Kenya has with Belgium, mm. I'm asking, does it also include technical assistance or technical partnerships? Because if it can work in your embassy, mm. then it means it can work in very many other government installations and it can work in very many other places within the country. The well, first of all, like I was saying before, this is this is the third embassy in Africa where we're making an effort um, in terms of climate-related construction and retrofitting. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an embassy in Morocco, we have our embassy in DRC in Kinshasa, and now this one. Um, so within the foreign ministry, the guys who deal with all our infrastructure abroad, they're building up an expertise um, to do this kind of work. At the level of the federal government, um, we've made the political decision to to um, make the effort on all our buildings that belong to the public sector to what we call green them, and that's the budget line that, that, that my ministry used. With regard to, to you know technical expertise that we could export, yes, technical which transfer, is, yes, which which is your which is what your question which, was, yes. With Kenya, we haven't had a, 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 a development program for the last 20 years. Um, our development assistance is is limited, like everybody's. The, the funds aren't, you know, there, there's no there's no uh, limitless amount of funds available. So we had to choose, and, and our the, the, we only work with, I think it's 15 or 18 countries at this point. Uh, Kenya is not one of them, and hasn't been since the early 2000s. That however doesn't mean that we don't do anything here uh, our our development uh, our relations with kenya in in that particular field are much more focused on um assisting assisting in in in, in the commercial relationship mm -hmm. so you'll have belgians who are trying to sell things here but much more importantly belgians who invest in kenya uh, and who make who, who who try to build their business here in Kenya, and from that perspective, specifically on the on the quote unquote green side, there's a there's a couple of companies who do really really interesting things. Uh, there's a company called Close the Gap, which is based in, for now, which is based in Mombasa, which refurbishes secondhand computers. So what they do is they buy, they they buy written off computers from big companies. Um, in Europe, but also here in Kenya, and refurbish them and then sell them at affordable prices. Uh, so these are computers that, that are maybe two, three years old because, mm. you know, companies write off their IT equipment relatively quickly, only two, three years old. Mm. They get refurbished, the memories get wiped, um, the operating system gets reinstalled, and they get sold at very affordable prices. So that, from, from a quote-unquote green perspective, is right smack in the middle of the circular economy, mm. right? Which is, which is part of this whole... Mm philosophy. Mm. There's another company who uh, has developed a system to, uh, well, who, who's developed uh, a way to create, to generate hydroelectric power in shipping containers. Mm. So he'll go to a village where there's a river, he'll stick, you know, I'm, I'm simplifying this, of course, <laughs> but, 
but he'll stick two or three of these containers together, run the river through them, and boom, the village has electricity. Um, there's, um, um, so those are, those are the two most, most visible ones. Of course, there's, there's also Ember River Camp, which I, which I mentioned, which is in the hospitality sector. So, um, and that kind of investments um, often, mostly, if not all the time, get support from 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 the government, we we, we we de-risk the investment. We mm. we help them with seed money and, and that kind of thing. So that's that's basically the way that we do our. If, if you want to call it development cooperation, sure, let's call it development cooperation. But I think it's more promoting promoting investments and promoting um, the business. Uh, relationship that we have between okay. Belgium and Canada. So let's take a break. When we come back, we speak specifically about development cooperation, right? Okay. And what kind of money you're putting in uh, aside, and what kind of support um, you are, you know, in terms of giving Kenya on the journey towards uh, having a carbon neutral country. Okay. The Ambassador of the Kingdom of Belgium, His Excellency Ambassador Peter Mardens, is our guest this morning. He's telling us about what they've done at the Belgian Embassy on Limuru Road in Nairobi, just next to Karura Forest. About how many acres of land is this? Oh, it's about it's about six acres. About three, six three acres, acres of land, yeah. which has the embassy, plus also the residence yes. of the ambassador, yes. all in one place, and you've converted this. So they've put solar power in there. They have uh, gone into water recycling. They are also doing water harvesting. They are doing uh, vertical gardens for, you know, their kitchen garden is all from there. <laughs> and this is leading to a net zero embassy in Nairobi. Belgium has been doing this uh, across Africa, one in Morocco, one in Kinshasa, and now this one in Nairobi. I want to speak to my friend Katole Metito. He's my neighbor in Kimana. But more importantly, he's a controller of State House. Right now, he's involved in a project of refurbishing state house huh? uh, you know maybe it's about time that they went green that they went green mm -hmm. as they're doing the refurbishments <laughs> of state house 25 minutes at nine we'll be back shortly this is the situation room the only way to start your day the weather with spice fm Sunny conditions in Nairobi, more than 17 degrees. We'll see highs of 25, highs of 26, and a mostly sunny Nakuru at 18. 17 and sunny in Nyeri with highs of 26, and we'll see highs of 26 in Eldoret where it's sunny at 17. The sun is up in Mombasa at 26, and we're looking at sunny conditions in Malindi as well at 26. Kisumu sunny at 22, and at 20, Kakamega is sunny. Uh, after a cloudy morning in Kampala, 21 and sunny, uh, we're going to see at 24 sunny conditions in Dar es Salaam, going to highs of 30. It's sunny at 17 in Johannesburg and um, at 29, the sun is up in Mogadishu as well. It's doing the same rounds at 18 in Addis Ababa. Cloudy at 26 in Lagos and cloudy at 25 in Kinshasa. Spice up your life. All right, we're in traffic hour and it's a busy morning where we're looking into coming through to the city. And it's off the thicker superhighway, very heavy traffic. Moranga Road is doing the thing again where we have traffic all the way then through towards Ngara and then onto the Globe Cinema overpass roundabout. All of that getting into the CBD, very, very busy. It's also busy on Gary Mathai coming through towards um, Uhuru Highway. Not quite sure what's causing this traffic, but if you do know, do let us know. Um, looking on from Lower Kabete through towards Spring Valley, coming round back. At Sari Center, there's a lot of traffic here as well. And uh, on the thicker super high, we're seeing that dwindling as you get towards um, Survey and then out towards um, this whole area where I told you there was traffic. Yes. All right, let's look at the Eastern Bypass. They're coming inbound to the city. There's also traffic through the loop out towards Outer Ring, and that's coming in from Cabanas and North Airport Road. So that's doing the business there, and it's very busy. Uh, like I said, we're still in traffic hour. Let's see what happens in about uh, half hour or so. Talk to us in the meantime on Spice FM, K E on X, hashtag the Situation Room. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings. Done.
done right. 94.4 Spice FM, Nairobi. Mine, our conversation with Ambassador Peter Martins of the Kingdom of Belgium continues. Balozi, development assistance. Okay, no, you're an ambassador. Development cooperation <laughs> between uh, the Kingdom of Belgium and Kenya. What projects are you involved in that touch on matters of climate change? Well, like I was saying, uh, we don't have a formal development program with Kenya, and we haven't had that for, for the last 20 years. Why? Well, like I, like I was saying, mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the means are limited, and we had to choose uh, with which countries to, to work with. Um, uh, and, you know, actually, frankly, the, the reason we, we weren't working with Kenya anymore was because we felt it was on the, on the right track, and it was um, much better off than some of the other countries that we do work with, uh, which is a good thing. Um, which is something you, you you want to strive for, right? To 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 be well enough off that you don't need that kind of cooperation anymore. Mm. Um, what we do do, however, is support investments and support uh, business relations with you know de-risking um, de-risking loans. Uh, with grants towards uh, like seed money for investments, etc. Okay. Uh, and a lot of those, or a number of those, are focused on uh, green projects. Um, we have uh, we have the investment arm of our development cooperation that makes a number of investments in 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 um, in venture capital funds that that do specifically that work specifically for in in, uh, in environmental and green projects. Uh, we have the the investment that we made in Hydrobox, the the hydroelectric uh, power generation in, com in shipping containers that I talked about earlier. So those are the kind of things that we that we do. And uh, frankly, every time we do make an intervention, or every time a company does come to us to seek for to to seek uh, or to look for help or to look for support, we do emphasize. Uh, or we do look at the green side of things. Mm. There's, there's a guy right now who's who's looking into um, electric vehicles, and I won't say what kind of vehicles, but who's looking into electric vehicles and and uh, um, <clears throat> and the infrastructure surrounding uh, the, prov the providing electric vehicle support here in Kenya. Mm. Uh, who's also looking to um, um, to get some kind of Belgium investment support. Uh, and again, it's it's electric vehicles, and it's 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 environmentally sound policies. Mm. Mm. Must this necessarily be a Belgian company? Well, if you're talking about using Belgian public funds, right. um, I, I don't think necessarily, but I think, I think we, we look with, with a lot more with a lot more positive um, regard, regard mm. if it is a Belgian <laughs> company, yes. Mm. <laughs> so is there, is there um, a deliberate effort being made by the embassy here? to encourage companies that are involved in green projects across the globe that are, you know, Belgian, mm. to look into projects in Kenya, to look into technical cooperation Absolutely. between those Absolutely. companies and Kenyan companies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. Yeah. So what kind of Absolutely. scope are we looking at? Well, I mean, often, often it's 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 the it's the company themselves who who uh, who come to us and say, "Is there something we can do in Kenya?" Like I said, there's this guy with the EVs, this guy with the, with the hydroelectric power in containers. Um, there were a number of there's a number of companies that, that look at recycling, that look at the circular economy, and they all come and say, "Look, is there is there a possibility here in Kenya?" And then we 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 help them. We not, but not just us here at the embassy here. Huh? It's also the Kenyan embassy in Brussels right. that helps with that. Yeah. Uh, we we're, we're we're actually we're actually pretty much in sync with the Kenyan embassy in Brussels as well. So. Yeah. So, I mean, there's global conversations um, around climate change, climate action, so many things happening at the same time. I mean, uh, Nairobi is just off the back of the climate summit that mm. took place a few months ago. And everybody is, I mean, the chatter is still very loud. Mm. It has been for, for years, Good. but getting, you know, louder. Good. You know? Um, can't get loud enough. It can't get... I guess that's where we're going. Um, so we're going to Brazil, this, you know, the next COP. And uh, looking at a South African, a South American COP. Um, Where it all started, by the way. Exactly. Mm. But then now we're saying that African countries um, need to be in the driver's seat when mm -hmm. it comes to this climate change, mm -hmm. climate action conversation. Mm -hmm. Do you think that it is possible for developments to be made in the climate agenda 
outside of a global conversation whereby we're talking about things like climate financing and we're talking about um, climate prejudice and etc etc but that we can say okay well while these global conversations are taking place while global action then is being hap is happening that there are things that can be we can actually start to get things done and start to move this needle isn't that exactly what i'm doing with my embassy well yeah so right moving yeah. that towards exactly. what individuals and countries exactly. and communities can actually exactly. do exactly everybody can do a little bit and and nothing is small enough Mm. Um, th that's exactly where we have to be be because that's that's the that's the only way we're going to move forward. Like I said, it cannot be just governments doing the big stuff, mm. and it cannot be just governments doing the big having the big conversations either. Uh, it has to be every individual doing his bit mm. as well, because mm. otherwise, it's it's also it's also look one of, one of the one of the more um, surprising yeah let's call it that one of the more surprising. Um, results of what we've done with with the embassy is the 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 um, the um, the unbelievable ambition that is created with our own staff. Mm. They are so into this project, and they're so they're so proud to be part of it, and and they're so they're they're, they're they they come up with their own ideas. Maybe we should do. Maybe this is the you know we should we should start thinking about. This is how we can reduce our electric uh, our our, ele our electric uh, consumption. Mm -hmm. You know what he said. One of our gardeners said, "You know what? In your vegetable garden, you're producing so much salad mm. that you can't consume yourself. Can I have two or three of these boxes to to make my own chicha?" Okay. Now, is and, that you know the, gov the and this is so they're 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 completely part of the project. And now is part of the project because they can see the benefit of yes. it because i often believe that until and unless somebody a group of bodies communities mm. people mm. can see the benefit of something the likelihood of them being involved in it is that's true uh, absolutely. close to enough absolutely no, right? and that's and that's where i have the privilege to be to be visible enough to be able to do this and 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 not only visible enough but actually i i have the 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 backing and the support from my own colleagues back at headquarters mm -hmm to do this not only for the for the environmental advantage that that we create but also to be able to set an example mm -hmm. and then it becomes a and then then it becomes a policy choice mm -hmm. which is exactly what we in the public sector have to do mm -hmm. so that's how you link the the, the 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 bigger policy debate and the bigger policy choices with in setting an example at the individual level mm -hmm. at the at the level that 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 an individual can actually relate to mm -hmm. right is there technical cooperation between Kenya and Belgium that could talk about all this work of, of looking at how to reduce our carbon emissions, of looking at how best we can improve on, you know, if it's solar panels, mm. if it's going into uh, aquaculture and this vertical agriculture. Is there kind of program such as this no. with schools no. is there room for that there is absolutely and it's and it's how would it look like well it's basically me going out and telling the story this is one of the reasons why i'm here today mm. that's that's precisely for that to tell the story of of the net zero emissions embassy in nairobi uh, and how we did it and why we did it and and what the advantage is for 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 us as an individual yep. quote unquote entity a relatively small i'm a, i'm a, i'm i'm an sme eh? Mm. I have 25 staff. I have two cars. I have three acres of land. Yeah, that's an SME. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, so if 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 me as an embassy, if I can do this, or if we can do this, yeah. the size of our like I was telling, like I was saying before, the story I told of of us visiting Embo River in in what was it October or November of of, of 2021, the first time we visited and when we, when we were shown, and my first thought was, I can do this. This is the same infrastructure as mine. Yeah. I can do this in my embassy. So if I can serve as an example to someone else, let's start with other embassies in Nairobi. Come on, guys, all my mm -hmm. colleagues, mm -hmm. I'm 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 challenging you to do this, to do the same. The the you know from a government perspective, it's 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 money, but it's not you know it's it's not going to make you eat less mm. tomorrow. It's not in some amount, right? So I have there's what 150 embassies here in Nairobi. There you go, guys. Here's your challenge. It's a part of example, like you're saying, Peter. It's it's about you showing that it's doable, mm -hmm. and people coming there to see that it's doable. Exactly. So far, since you started this project, 
and I'm sure you've had conversations with your fellow ambassadors and high commissioners and they've come and seen and your friends in the corporate sector and also your staff. Have you seen uptick yes. of this in their areas? Yes. Tell us about some. Well, I mean, w when, when, when people come and see me, um, when people come and see the project or when I tell them about it, very often they're, they're, they're asking me, who did this for you? Who are the companies that made that made this possible? Who did the the construction? Who who you know? Who put in the solar panels? Who put in the biodigester? Who put in the vertical gardens, etc.? And I and I uh, I point them in the direction of the companies that did this. Yeah. And from what I gather, uh, these companies are indeed already having conversations with other entities to 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 try and emulate at least some of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there was there was <laughs> there was one ambassador who said to me. You know what? I'm so jealous of what you're doing. Go ahead. Let, let, go on TV. Go on the radio. Embarrass me as much go as you want. Go and gloat. Yeah. Embarrass me as much as you want. <laughs> and here you are. And here I am. Doing exactly Thank, that. Thanks to you guys for allowing me to do it. <laughs> There's something that one hears uh, within the, uh, if I may refer to this, green space. Mm. It's called green financing. Mm -hmm. Now, how involved is Belgium in this aspect of financing? Oh, we're very much into it. I mean, yes. uh, we're, we're, again, um, all the conversation on, on um, international cooperation, um, uh, on financing for development, all of that conversation is, is, is turning, is getting a, a, a green sauce poured over it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, um, and we're we're very much in the thick of it. I mean, uh, you know, Belgium has has directors at the IMF and at the World Bank. We're we're a member of the European Union. So in all those debates, we we do we, we are we are part of that debate, and mm -hmm. we're we're at the forefront of that debate as well, um, because we've we are again with our with our investment arm in the in the in the in the Belgian development cooperation. We always look at green projects for for that kind of stuff. Yeah, have you given the relationship that the kingdom has with countries on this continent? Are there places where this green financing has actually absolutely helped? okay? Absolutely, we have a we have a, a huge hydrogen project with with Namibia. Mm. Um, we uh, again we we're, we're making we're we're showing examples again with with our embassies in Morocco, Congo, and here, uh, and we're garnering a lot of interest with our partners in in, in that particular space, mm. um, and our you know our, our commercial credit de-risking. Um, and, and development programs are always there's there, there there's always uh, we always try and look for a green angle. Let's put it that way. Absolutely, can't always find it um, because again, when you're talking about develop development cooperation or development um, uh, assistance, there's various sectors that that you work in. And again, this is not here in Kenya because we don't have that kind of a program. But in the countries where we do have a program, you're always talking about the education sector, the healthcare sector, the infrastructure sector, mm -hmm. and it's 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 not always. Um, it's not always easy to add a, a green element when you're talking about, for example, healthcare. Um, but we try. Uh, you know, we, we, there's, again, there's another there's another Belgian company that's that's uh, trying to uh, enter the market. Well, that has actually already entered part of the market here in the healthcare sector, and they they do environmentally um, responsible management of medical waste. Uh, and again, that's also a company that we that we support from from with with, with public funds. Uh, so even in even in the healthcare sector and obviously in the education sector, you know, uh, that that that's easy. But that's more in education programs rather yep. than management of the education sector. Mm. Um, so yeah, there's 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 always there's there's always uh, we're always seeking a green angle, and sometimes it's easier than others. Well, as you know, in these global conversations about climate change, um, there appears to be a line drawn somewhere the global north versus the global south, mm -hmm. the developed world versus the developing world. Okay. Um, the reason why the developed world is so It's not what your president said is, at, at is the climate so summit. Developed. <laughs> yeah, it, it's not. He made, he made the exact point that that's no longer, that that shouldn't be a division Th anymore. That that should, that should change, mm -hmm. right? And the reason why he was making that is because that has been a perception. That there is the north and south, there is the developed and the developing, there is the responsibilities of both sides, mm. the responsibility that the North bears on where we are today versus the mm. consequence and the brunt that the South bears 
because of what the North has been okay. doing. Over and this whole com conversation about climate financing is because those who have the responsibility ought to be doing something. But it's been taking forever mm. to get it moving. Mm. Why do you think this is so? Do you think it's because of unwillingness to just get the things done? <laughs> um, good, good, good question. Um, but again, let me let me go back to, you know, what what President Ruto said at the at the climate summit, where we're, we're, there shouldn't there shouldn't be this divide. Um, we should all be aiming towards the same the same goals, and and that's one of the reasons why we were we were we were also. Um, um, was the, I, I don't know what kind of word to use here. Happy, pleased, uh, uh, proud, encouraged. Mm -hmm. encur encouraged. There okay. you go. Thank there you. you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Encouraged by that by that speech. Um, why is it taking so long? Um, inertia. Uh, it, it it always takes long to get these big things, these big debates going, um, or to get these big debates to toward to bring them towards a result. Let's put it that way. Mm. Um, and I and you know I, I I get it. I get why it takes long. It shouldn't. Um, but I think the momentum has shifted. I think uh, the more you look at um, the more you look at what um, a lot of countries in the in the north. Uh, are doing and saying, uh, the more you'll notice that, that the debate has started to shift and that there is that there is now uh, much more understanding of 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 the history. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to say the relationship. Let's call it the history. Right? Mm -hmm. There's more understanding of the history and and of the of the of the responsibilities and of the and and what we need to do to move forward. Mm -hmm. um, if you if you hear a lot of people talking about de-risking investments and stuff like that, that's exactly what that what that's about. You know, the president makes the point and rightly so that um, the 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 uh, uh, access to finance for countries in the global south is a lot more difficult and a lot more expensive than for others you know that's that's the way the market works mm. uh, our role especially in the, in the, in the north and those of us who who do want to have a, a development um, activity or or or, a, or develop a, a relationship with with the global south our role in that is to mitigate the the, the problems that the markets create you know, the, the technical term. Or well, take up the conversation. The technical example. term is de-risking, right? Take, take up, take up the conversation. Take up the concerns that have been expressed yeah. by the South, for example, on the and issue of, of global uh, access to, finan to mm -hmm. finance. You say that Belgium is now in the front row, mm -hmm. leading this conversation, the push towards thinking green and going green. Mm -hmm. What kind of role are you playing in the conversation that, for example, our president has, has uh, brought up on access to finance? For the developing and undeveloped world. Well, that's exactly the conversation we're having internally within Belgium as well. How do we do this? How do we, how do we de-risk investments? How do we make sure that, uh, you know, a, a Kenyan company that finds it that that is that is paying three, four, five percentage points more for a loan than an equivalent European company would? How do we subsidize that that difference in 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 the interest rate? And can we use our public money to subsidize that difference that that difference? And that's exactly the the direction we want to go in. And that's what I. I was saying when I when 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 I was telling you the story of of, of of our the development arm of our development corporation or the investment arm of our development corporation, or the export financing agency that we that we run from the foreign ministry, that's exactly the kind of stuff that they that, that, that they try and do is to is to is to subsidize the difference. For example, the difference in interest rates, uh, put in seed money whereby the, the the cost of the initial investment is. But ambassador, is you said all this is supporting Belgian companies. Yeah. Belgian companies that are coming to invest in right. Africa, right. so they're able to access cheaper loans yep. from Belgium and through the support of the Belgian government yeah. to come and invest in Africa. Yeah. How about African companies that would like well, to do this? That, like that, those, are the those are the companies that the Belgian companies partner with, and the employment is happening here. So when 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 Hydrobox installs its uh, its 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 systems in 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 Muranga. I, I I see the Belgian company who brings the money, but the whole company that that does the 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 the, the installation, the the building, and then the management of the system. That whole company is a Kenyan company. Do you think it's possible, with all these 
layered conversations, mm. layered sentiments. I mean, whether we look at it at a local or regional level, and then of course look at the global conversations that are being had with the, you know, unending uh, yearly meetings. Can we actually make the situation better? Aren't we already doing that? If we look at the levels at which we want, essentially what we're saying is save the planet and get to the point whereby we say, you know, we're not going to have these things. Fossil fuels, carbon emissions, mm. credits, all this conversation. It's never going to be fast enough. I agree with that. Mm. But aren't we already moving in that direction? Mm. But are we are moving? We? Yeah, are I think so. Or is there more talk about moving in that direction than actually movement? You see, the if we had, for instance, 20 embassies based in Nairobi doing what you've mm. done, then it is not just talk. I would say we're moving. Well, somebody has to be the first, and I am. Mm -hmm. It is true. All right. But so let's let's talk again in two or five years and see how many have emulated, have followed the example. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, it's not fast enough. I know that. Absolutely, it's not fast enough. And if my son is listening, and I told him to, uh, <laughs> although it's only seven in the morning, or it was seven in the morning when we started, um, he'll 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 tell you, you know, he'll he'll say. Thanks for saying that, Dad, that we're not moving fast enough. He's, he's the climate av activist who gave me the consciousness <laughs> uh, to do this. Um, but, of course, it's not fast enough. I agree. I completely agree that it's not fast enough. And the, the problem with, you know, what, what climate scientists are telling us is that it's, it's so not fast enough that we're actually endangering it. Yeah. Mm. Okay, fine. On the other hand... I think it is fundamentally disrespectful of human ingenuity to not believe that we're going to make it. Mm. We can make it. You know, I look at, I look at, for example, all right. So I'm, I'm, I'm a baby boomer, right? I was, yeah. I was born in 1960, and I remember when I, when I, at my last year in college, there were the Olympic Games in Los Angeles, right? And the big debate then was how dangerous is it to, to, to do sports in Los Angeles, given the air pollution that you had in Los Angeles at the time. This is 1984, huh? mm. Smog and, and, and pollution and a terrible, terrible situation to, to, to be outside in. You go to Los Angeles today and it's a gorgeous city. And it's clean. Same in, same in, I remember when I was a kid living in Brussels, yep. the, the winters, we would have, you know, fog and smog and whatever all winter long. The airport would be closed. You don't get fog anymore in Brussels. Mm. So we're doing something right. Mm. Again, it's not fast enough, but we're, we're, in, we're moving in the right direction. And I am a, f a believer in human ingenuity. We'll get there. Uh, and maybe we'll, you know, we'll, we, won't, we won't have gotten there quickly enough. And there will be things that we have to, that we're going to have to deal with. Absolutely. But mm. we will. Okay. We've got to end it there. Ambassador Peter Madden, the ambassador of the Kingdom of Belgium to Kenya. He's been our guest. to will be talking about the net zero embassy that's the belgian embassy in nairobi and what they've done about it and what the example is setting one minute past nine news time Followed by Chief Inspector Ole Sene, who will be analyzing the data presented by Safaricom. And finally, Chief Inspector Clement Mwangi, who's the lead investigating officer in the matter. In the case, the ex-county chief is among those on trial of a Sharon's mother and her born baby that took place on September 3rd, 2018 in Homa Bay County. The Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission has arrested a former MP aspirant for allegedly impersonating its detectives. ESCC spokesman Eric Ngumbi said the suspect was issuing fake integrity clearance certificates to job seekers at a fee while disguising top officials of the commission. The suspect was tracked by ESCC detectives from Nairobi to his home in Kitui County where he was arrested. His firearm and seven mobile phones are among the items confiscated from him. He'll be escorted from the integrity Center at Milimani Law Courts from 8.30 a.m. Roads and Transport Cabinet Secretary Kipchumba Morkoman has explained why the James Kishuru to Rironi area underpasses floods often whenever it rains. In a statement responding to a question raised by lawyer Paul Mwite on Twitter, Morkoman said the roads flood because their outfall drains have not been completed. He went on to say that several other roads around the same area remain incomplete due to various reasons. Morkoman noted that the contractor is waiting for payment to to resume and complete the remaining work. The Kenya Union of Clinical Officers 
Kenya National Union of Medical Laboratory Officers and KMPDU will this morning hold a meeting with the clergy. The clergy team will be led by Archbishop Olesa Pete and Bishop Anthony Meheria with the aim of pleading with the health workers to call off their strike which has affected health services for more than a month now. This event comes as efforts to end the doctor strike hit a dead end with KMPDU leaders blaming the government for failing to address a part of their demands in the 2017 CBA. The court last week gave the government and KMPDU a one-month ultimatum to resolve their differences. Initially we wanted that by the time we are close ending strike, we have those doctors already employed. We didn't want to put this process, so those are some of the things. Yes. And uh, also in the business areas, we wanted the instant. But now they will offer some, inst they will offer paying in, ins in installments. So because we are looking at an uh, aspect of compromising, that's the thing that as, as what I was just saying, uh, we have not we have not saying everything now. We can we can compromise and have a timeline so we maintain of some of these things, but with clear cut plan. But I know that there's somebody here watching this evening hoping that this strike can end soon so they can go and get that surgery that they've been waiting for. Kenyans will this Friday have another opportunity to remember and mourn the former KDF Chief of Defense Forces, Francis Ogola. Speaking during his burial, his daughter Lona Chiang described her father as an exceptional inspiration and godly man. Ogola's son Joel Rabuku asked Kenyans to expect more stories of the general's life on Friday. He worked as if he was working for God. He had an audience of one. Anything he was doing, he was working for God and God alone. And we saw it. Let me tell you, this man, when I was in, already in college and Joey was about to go into college, he went back to university. In On Friday during his memorial, we have very many stories about general we should have everyone laughing for very many minutes. So hopefully you can join us then as well. General Ogola was buried in Gear Village, Siaya County, 72 hours after he died in a chopper he was traveling in alongside other officials. That's the news wire. I'm Lea Ubaga. Okay, so where are we this morning? Some traffic here and there coming off of the thicker superhighway. Uh, we'll get rid of it in a bit just by the time, you know, everybody would have reached where they're going and then that will fizzle out real quick. However, what is happening coming on Muranga Road and then getting towards Ngara and then out towards the Globe Cinema overpass, that's busy. James Gishoro, uh, I beg your pardon, um, uh, Landis Road, busy as you approach the um, Kamkunji roundabout. So all of that is what is looking like the most of a mess right now. Uh, we'll keep an eye on things. We should be out of traffic hours. Soon enough, we'll keep you abreast of everything that's going on. Spice of MKE on X, hashtag the Situation Room. This is the Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes it's in punching up, up not now. down. Our conversations continue this morning. So, roads are busy. Uh, roads have been flooded over the weekend. People have been misbehaving mm. and behaving. Mm. And what's the advice that you've been given? Stay off certain roads. You mm. know, don't go there because, yeah, we'll have to sort that out. And then other, some, the silence. I mean, the silence is so loud that it smacks you in the face. Um, but uh, for some roads, you're just going to have to stay with them. 
first one that we see, Raila Odinga were here because you couldn't even tell what was going on. And then there's Links Road in Mombasa at Nyali specifically because that again is another situation. We're also being told that when it does rain and you're approaching, since you're outbound on Mombasa Road and you're going towards Mlolongo, there's a part where it splits between the service lane and remains on the main highway. When it rains, you do not know what is what. The visibility is non-existent yes and so a lot of people were found in the ditch mm. because you know you can't really tell there's no demarcation between the service lane and the main highway yeah so certain roads you're being asked to watch out for if you go into the sea that is south sea and the sea that is south b and the sea that is then nairobi west during these times you also need to be very careful yeah. ironically there's a part of south sea that's called water mm. because that's where the water institute is yeah that place is underwater very nice so also being told to please be very careful <laughs> about those areas because you just don't know how deep the stuff actually is it, it, it's a it's it's a tivet water <laughs> institute is a tivet, it's a tivet right yes so they teach people practically this is what so they, <laughs> they need water okay to teach yeah. people about Step outside, Water. please, and see what I'm telling yeah. you, yeah. right? Mm. Okay. Mm. There's a place also on James Geshoro, and it's going out towards the direction of Rironi. Yeah. This is an interesting one. It was in the news. SO. So let me tell you what happened. Please yeah? do. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, Senior Council Paul Moite mm. tweeted, bringing some attention to Kipchuma Murkomen. He said, C.S. Murkomen, all the underpasses on the Nairobi Nakuru Road from Odero to Rironi area are a nightmare, not just for small cars, but trailers and tankers too, waterlogged, deep craters and rocks sticking out. Please use the road maintenance levy that we pay for every liter of fuel to fix this. Come on. Well, Quick, come on, is me. And, you know, as you're going from Westlands all the way to Rironi, that's a uh, Maimahu turn off, eh? Mm-hmm. Both sides of the road, there are some underpasses. Yes, there are. Those underpasses are not done. So you can see the road is being done. The build bridge has been built. But Apachini. But Apachini, which is now connecting guys who are coming from one side to so they can cross over to the other side of the road. Not finished. Not finished. They are basically craters. And what Paul Moita is saying is true. They are craters. So when it rains like this, it fills up. It just fills up. So it becomes a dam. And Kipchumba is like, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You fact, know what? You know what, Senior Council? You're very right. You're very right. James Kishuru to the Roni underpasses do flood because their respective outfall drains have not been completed. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh, wow. This includes Zambezi, <laughs> Chungamali, and Tilisi, Gichini. For Zambezi and Chungamali, the acquisition of land to construct a pond is not done. What? That's not what it says. The, for Zambezi and Chungamali, the acquisition of land to construct a pond is not done. I do not know what pond and road. <laughs> I don't know the, the link. <laughs> but uh, Pond. pond. <laughs> that one is uh, blue economy. Pond. Unfinished work includes service roads, the Kangemi overpass, the Gitaro interchange, the various other underpasses. Outfall drains also plus street lights and footbridges. The James Geshoro Rironi Road has an active development contract with a huge pending bill. As you may be aware, we have unfinished roads all over the country with a cumulative pending bill of 165 billion shillings. Under the law, a road with active development contract cannot be allocated the road maintenance funds. At the same time, the contractor is waiting for some payment to resume site so contractor not on site because pass well, how long have we have has this road been since yeah? the jomo kenyatta days I, 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 okay i mean this is not something that began last year no. no so this road basically what we are hearing from the government is that the contractor was given a contract to do the job all right the contractor should be getting money upon certain milestones Contractor hits a milestone, government does not release the money that's supposed to come. So contractor gets out of sight because now contractor is not on site. So all these things, foot bridges, you underpasses. You and the need, problem need, is need. whatever was built actually not deteriorate. Yep. <laughs> People have started talking about potholes on this particular road even before it's complete. And it's not complete. Oh, yeah. Because of the accidents and incidences on that road, we have requested a, a partial budgetary support from the Treasury and have negotiated with the contractor to, upon receiving the partial payment, resume and complete most critical sections for the sake of safety.
We have held extensive discussions with the leaders of Kiambu, led by Majority Leader National Assembly, Nairobi leaders, Governor Sakaja, MPs for Westlands, Kabete, Kikuyu, Kiamba, Limuru and Lari. Women Rep and Senator for Kiambu have all called on me several times to discuss the completion of that road. All things constant, we should commence works on the critical areas within the next four weeks. June. You're asking when four weeks, Nini? Yeah. It's June. Okay. okay? Mm. That's when you're going to get some partial budgetary support. This is a road that was budgeted for when it started. And yes. every year there's money allocated to this particular yes, project yes, to continue. Uh, contractor was on site? Contractor left site. Okay. Because no money. All right. So now the negotiation is, uh, what a tough, what a tough 20,000 EV, mm. at least we'll dish a tractor on site. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. In fact, what you do, when I call a shimu pali, what you do, but you pass a maram. Welcome, welcome, Changa. Yeah, Ili, yes, you know. And so maram, maram is expensive. Yes. To but, go to red soil, lapo kwa yes. shamba ya. Na Ili uspati shida pia na kutumia pesa kidogo ya petrol. Man, that road has been built forever. Yeah. And you know, we never start building roads until you are certain of a budget budgetary allocation. Mm. So all these years, you know, see budget, our budgeting process yearly. Yep. So what are you telling us has been happening all these years? Those questions need to be asked. Huh? They need to be asked of Okuria Tani and James Masharian. Yes, yes, all those people. It's all not just guys. Murko, man. He's having all these eggs staring at him. Mm. This is not his doing. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. He found this. You know, it's good for us to face reality. Eh? Mm. Yep. We will never get out of these problems. Mm. <laughs> oh. That's where we've gone to. Yes. Okay. That's, that's, re good. that's reality. That's the reality. <laughs> that, look at the reality. Because this is nonsense. We've been doing this deliant and this romance with, okay, fill it up with Maram. Oh, let's talk about, oh, let's beg the exchequer for money. Oh, let us talk to Treasury and see if we can negotiate. Rubbish. Come on. In what warp society do you have a road that has been under construction for decades? Is that not what we're talking about? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's about a decade. A decade? Mm. Even... Oh, a decade a road mm. what is the length of this road in terms of kilometers mm. what are we talking about there was a contractor on site there was a but just look at the process for which something like this was supposed to be done until in 2024 we're complaining about an issue and yeah you're right ct is it, this thing happened historically so the cs is giving explanations for something that maybe he doesn't really get you nah, know this he, guy wasn't, wasn't, he was he was nowhere, nowhere near this thing, near this nowhere, thing even nowhere, when it started nowhere. but he's now the minister uh, yes and now so you have to deal with issues explain. what's going on yes but look at the history of this thing it is misappropriation, it is mismanagement, it is just general bad manners. That you start something and you say, well, you know, because of ABC, we're just not going to finish it. You actually are making a conscious decision to not get things done. 165 billion shillings. Come on, has already been for spent. For pending roads. No. Roads. For pending roads Z across the country. 165 billion shillings. Excuse me, Eric. And the solution we are coming up with is, uh, you know, yes, go ahead. These are not new projects. No, no, no. It's, pen it's pending. It's ongoing These projects. Thank you. 165 billion shillings, not the... the projects are not completed because 165 billion shillings has not come out to the various contractors. Do you <laughs> now perhaps want to agree with me when i say mm. we're never going to get out of this thing nope we're not they're not going it's not going to end this is rubbish mm. by the time your children have children we'll still be discussing this story after all their children will have started a new project oh my dear i said i'm going to use from rironi enterprise road to, as an example from rironi to nini will have started it's called mao summit from rironi to mao summit will have started Meanwhile, Westlands to Rironi will not be complete. Uh, meanwhile, Machakos Junction to Kitangela Junction will not be complete. Enterprise, Enterprise Road. Uh, Enterprise. Enterprise uh. Road. There are people whose mothers eh, mm. went to the delivery ward passing this Enterprise Road that is like is. this. Yeah. Those children have finished university today. <laughs> 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 you people are wondering why I'm telling you this thing is not going to finish. <laughs> hey, God in heaven. We've, those are roads that you want to pass to go from point A to point B. After all, is this not road A, B? Is there okay. road B? No, road A, road C, road yeah. 1. So yeah. That's how you get to them going from be a here. solution to this. CT. What's the solution? Do you know, and I think sometimes... So, so we'll build an expressway. <laughs> 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 
we we basically we we need to have a serious conversation because I can I can you. see I can see what what Kipchumba is trying to do. He's trying to balance. He can see okay. So if I go and ask for the money that these guys need, eh, I'll be told by Njogonandongo. Where? Uh, <laughs> so we don't have money. Where we we are trying to sack people who don't have who have fake degrees. So that we can gather money. Now you're asking me to give interns to go and hey, yeah, you well, you've not people to are on money strike. To, we're looking for, for a road which money was already allocated for. Yeah. And I now give you more. <laughs> what are you saying? Now the in? problem is that money will come from the national treasury, go to this contractor, and the contractor will not be doing what they're supposed to be doing. They'll be, you know, doing some car patch up work. The patch up work will be all right. So you know. Uh, we needed to have constructed this road. We needed to have had X number of footbridges here. So because we can't have footbridges, let's do this. Let's just chora the road and create zebra crossing <laughs> and put bumps. That's what's going to happen. And rumble strips. And rumble strips. Hey, God in heaven. These underpasses, okay, so now these underpasses cannot work. We have un underpasses. They are wide enough, actually, to be on, like, dual carriage on the underpasses. Mm. Right? Like the one at Tilisi. Mm. Huge, wide, but it's an entire river down there. So what we are going to do now, this underpass, let's just close off one side. Let's just open one side. So now at least vehicles can be passing. But millions of shillings is going to be spent to, to do that thing. And once the money is finally released, the contractor will not have enough to go and do the job that he was supposed to have done in the first place. How does That's the fear that I have for this road. Ask a question. If you, you drive along that road just before you come in, Ndu, mm. I was actually on that road sometime last week mm. and it started raining and it was in the evening were you able to see anything oh you visibility took a picture. I used horrible a video and sent to us yes you did no that was a different that was a road different one. okay this particular one you see the barriers that they put in between the road mm. those concrete blocks mm. Huh? Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay there is no footbridge oh dear. so you can imagine somebody who has arrived at zambezi mm. or any of those areas kangemi they have come from nairobi they live on the other side of the road <laughs> And you've come from Nairobi with your child, maybe you had come from hospital. Because I saw, actually saw one woman carrying a baby, a bug, and another small child. Crossing the road. Trying to cross the road. So they do four lanes, three lanes, on one side, the Valaitar Matatu. Run, 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 run. Come to this Kabaria. Stand in between the road. Mother look. Then mother estimate that those vehicles are far. Are far. And it's raining. And mother is carrying baby and holding another baby. And, and carrying a bag. bag. And mother has to then think of maneuvering the next three lanes crossing the road. And vehicles are coming. It's raining. Poor visibility. Some rumble strips have been put somewhere. Guy comes and he rumbles. And I was like, oh my goodness. When you talk about the statistics of road accidents and you see majority are pedestrians, pedestrians. this is what happens. Now, you get kidogo money from Dr. Chris Kipto. It oh. goes into this contractor. This contractor mm. is told now, but I sort out. Contractor is just going to remove one barrier, mm. put higher bumps, and make this a zebra crossing. That somebody has to cross. On a highway. On a highway. Please remember, on a highway. And those bumps are not going to be marked. They will not be visible when it's raining. So you come in and you're flying over that bump. When you hit that hole. And you find somebody who's carrying a baby and walking with a baby and a bag. and Full impact. Yes. This is what we, like you say, these children that were crossing the road, this is what they know. That's not how, that's but how they, they know they the road not is supposed know, to be. They don't know any anything else because else. they've never seen anything else. Yeah. You know, look, this is the... And I, I actually want to ask because you know it's, it's easy to get upset and say okay let's look at this thing properly because this rironi road that we're talking about is mm. not the only one in the country of course no. we're giving enterprise an ex as an example fidelis said i used enterprise road in 2009 when it had been dug up 2009 mm. when it had been dug up mm -hmm. <laughs> i joined college i went out of the country came back and now have a family and i'm almost retiring nabado <laughs> in <laughs> <laughs> 2009 was before the constitution yes sir <laughs> um, it's interesting because Amos Wako was an attorney general yes Amos Wako went into politics he served two terms as a senator, senator, senator he's yeah. now chilling he's yeah. retired yes <laughs> Nabado <laughs> Enterprise is saying I see you <laughs> Enterprise is saying hi <laughs> let me tell you <laughs> Black says, how about doing the journalistic part and getting the information on who the contractor is? I have pictures. 
of that contra on that of that board I will, in fact tomorrow i promise you i'll tell you who it is because i have pictures i just don't have them here oh, <clears throat> enterprise. Right? of enterprise and he said and telling us who and bring them to ask and put it on public record let me tell you something yeah here all of these things that we're speaking of have been budgeted for yeah. the budgeting process is not wake up in the morning i'm sitting at my desk and say oh by the way there's a road that needs to be built uh -huh. how much do you have mm -mm. Mm. you go through it people bid right yep. the tender is given after this comes out of the realization that this thing needs to be done yep it is then awarded the contract is awarded and that's how you have that fancy billboard mm. where you have all the names contract etc uh, etc cetera, etc cetera, et cetera. it is given to somebody money is released it is put in the cycle whereby we know that money will be released for this project 80 percent and this is not me that's saying this mm. is ministry who is saying mm. 80 percent of these pending projects of infrastructure that have stalled what is the reason why they have stalled money that the contractor will leave site because they say we have not been given the money that we need to complete the project so what do they do they pack their load they go in some cases they'll even leave the vehicle the that machinery the there. Machine, they leave it there and say ah, you people are not serious yep. get out leave me alone yep. 80 percent of these pending projects the reason why they've not been completed is because money has not been given yep. the question for me is not who the contractor is the question for me is when you budget for a project such as this what is your plan mm. don't you think that in order for it you know if the, if you've paid the fella and he's not or he and she he or she has not finished mm. that's a totally different case mm. but if the f person is on ground to finish the project and you who has commissioned the project do not pay them how exactly do you imagine that this thing is supposed to finish and then what do we have? We have this thing where people come and put rumble strips and zebra crossings on bumps because you've not done the thing properly. It's not been completed. So you have this thing where people are playing a Russian roulette with their lives every day on Enterprise, trying to move from one side of the road to the other. You're trying to maneuver around. Do Are we coming or going? Are we inbound or outbound? Mm. We're trying to escape gullies and all sorts of things, trying to get from Mombasa Road to Road A or mm. Road C. Mm. For goodness sake. Let me tell you, it is not a matter of all oh, pending projects. It is bad manners. It's complete, absolute. It, it, is, it is craziness. Yep. It is craziness. Yep. And that's what I'm telling you. It is not going to end. Because you start asking yourself, these are highways. Boss, these are highways. Mm. These are major roads that are being used. If you ask yourself, if this is the situation that's going on, and guess what? All this noise that we're making is because rain has come. If there was no rain... Do you think that explanation that was being given about Zambezi and about a pond being built in the oh, middle of nowhere? Let me tell you, we've you asked about that road a number of times. Yeah, okay. come on. But now the explanation that's being given is that you'll be told, oh, because it has rained and then, uh, uh, it has happened. In the next four weeks, we are going now at least to start seeing it, something. Okay. I, <laughs> what, Eric, do you think is going to happen with roads that are interstate? They will never be done. They will never be constructed. There are roads in South C, there are roads in South B, there are roads off Jogo Road, there are roads behind here, Mombasa Road, closet yep. towns of Nairobi, yep. that for the foreseeable future will not be constructed. Because yep. if this is the situation on your major roads, mm. which people are applying every day, what do you expect to happen? We have conversations for two reasons, so that people can continue talking about them or that so people can do something about them. This is not going to change. It's best the reality sat up and hit you in the face for you to realize this is what you're dealing with over and over again. It's not going to change. What do we need to do to Come make it on. change? Come on. I think we just need to look back. Okay, so for example, here is Kipchumba, all right? He's appointed the CS for transport. He comes in and the figure of 165 now, I think, is just... he. Even the time when we hosted him here, he talked about the 165 billion shillings of pending bills on national road projects, okay? He finds that. He goes to the airport, he finds the airport is leaking, he does some kidogo, kidogo changes, he removes the manager, he brings in a new board, da, 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 but he does not ask. So how did we end up procuring this generator and bringing the generator here and not installing the generator or can we start installing that answer he does not get the answer mm -mm. he comes and finds a project that was supposed to have been completed completely called the expressway up road down down road left as you know a cattle truck so he asks so what was supposed to happen here 
He's told uh, there was supposed to have been money allocated for this in the budget. Eight billion shillings is like eight billion. Tuna zapata eight billion. Tuna zapata eight billion. Uh, Can we just do it maybe with less than money? So three billion. Kipchumba has come in, has found a festering wound. Hmm. Right? And Kipchumba is now just dealing with how do we manage this wound? Can we just wash the wound? Can we just, you know, just... So we don't have to chop off the Can leg. we give this patient some painkiller? We are not dealing with the actual wound. That's the problem that I have. I can see where he's coming from. He's like, oh my goodness, I found all these problems. Mm. But fix it. And fix it by even if it means that you look back to the past and call in the ministers who were, the minister who was there before, those that were there before you. If it's James Masheria, call him and ask him, so, okay. This is it. If it's a Kenya Roads Board, because actually it even goes from, from the minister, it goes to the Kenya Roads Board. Kenya Roads Board, these are the roads that you said, this is it. Money was allocated for these roads. Uh -huh. So you've said, you, Kura, you shall do this road and the other. Kenha, you shall do this road and the other. You, the rural one is called what? Kera. Kera, you shall do this and the other. Why are these roads incomplete? Why? Do we have these roads incomplete? Actually, you know the what? The management right. of the Kenya Roads mm. Board should be answering those questions. Absolutely. You know what? You're right. I think about it because my mother had a crack in one wall. Mm. And the guy came and they said, you know what? This is nice, but I can plaster this thing, okay? And uh, we can go for maybe another nine months. Mm. But at some point, I'm going to need to come back. You'll call me again. You'll call me. And we need to now go down and find out what exactly is causing this. It could be a pipe that burst in the wall, something. So, madam, what I urge you to do right now is we need to bring down this wall, mm -hmm. all right? If, and check if there's a pipe that's broken. Let us fix that pipe, and then now we put the thing. That's exactly what you're saying. Where was the problem originally? Yep. Somebody chop money? Did somebody do a poor job? Did somebody not do... What was it? Let's fix that. Because... You have so many latent issues for which the cause is not being looked at. And we're adding on to them. And just building on top of, on top of. And that's why I'm saying the reality is that we're never going to get out of it. Mm -hmm. So you need to look at the very beginning, what caused all of this, and then fix it from there. We'll be talking about this thing forever. If, 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 if we have overcommitted in road projects beyond what our budget can afford, Let's come out and say it. We can't do this. This is time. what we did. We made a mistake. So can we stop everything else and just finish these roads? Uh -huh. Okay. No new roads. And by saying can we stop everything else, it's not waiting at it for. It's actually putting aside the money in the budget to complete the roads and say that these are the priority roads and they need to be completed. You can't have a road where people are just dying on a daily basis and you say we shall, we shall you know, we'll be back here in about four months. Mombasa Road with the three billion shillings. Can you see a three billion shilling work of work, worth of work being going on here? <laughs> on the refurbishments on Mombasa Road. If you put one billion, one billion on Mombasa Road, you think we'll not feel it? It's, we need to have these conversations. Fred is saying he first started using Enterprise Road with this kind of construction going on mm. 15 years ago. <laughs> 15 years ago. And here we are. Yeah, that's 2009, just mm. like someone said. Mm -hmm. It's... Well, in you bang you the potent kind it's half past nine let's take a break CT Muga. CT Lodge. Muga, not Muga. He's here and he has the day's problem. One man marries a woman, another man marries trouble. Is he the same man? <laughs> Spice. A lion cannot eat more than two dangles. It will die a natural death because there is no ICU in the forest. In Kenya, it has become the situation that you cannot conduct two elections. In fact, With the Bukati, same ABC. Uh, you, you can't. I told you about this Indian friend of mine who was uh, enjoying other Indians in the group. He wrote the word valve and told them, read it. <laughs> so how did he say it? I really want to know. The valve. <laughs> <laughs> Edna, it's the, 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 you said the bees are the bees. Kira kitu mkapu, mkisia kisema, atasema obus. Obus? Mkisema hii, atasema obus. Opposite. Wewe mkisikirisa na mbibu, unasikia? Obus. The Situation Room Spice. The only way to start your day. 
Well, a sunny morning. We don't know what the will weather in with spike. The forecast is for sunny conditions going to highs of 25 in Nairobi. 26 will be the high in a mostly sunny Nakuru and 18 and sunny in Nyeri with highs of 26. Eldoret will see highs of 26 as well and lows of 14. Into Mombasa, it's sunny at 29 with highs of 31 and we'll see highs of 31 in a sunny Malindi at 28. It's probably sunny at 25 in Kisumu with highs of 29 while in Kakamega we'll see highs of 30 currently sunny at 23. Into Kampala, sunny at 25 and highs of 28 while Dar es Salaam raining now at 26 we'll see highs of 30. Johannesburg is sunny at 21 with highs of 27 while Mogadishu at 30 is sunny going to highs of 33. It's 19 and sunny in Elder Abegapanin. It's um 19 and sunny in Addis Ababa with highs of 24 and lows of 14 while Lagos is cloudy at 26 we'll see highs of 34 and highs of 34 as well in a cloudy Kinshasa at 26 we're looking into a partly sunny Beijing at 24 um, going to highs of 26 and 5 degrees and sunny in Paris it's 6 degrees and sunny in London we'll round things off in New York coming into Monday we'll see highs of 16 and lows of 6 So still heavy as you go towards the Globe Cinema overpass underpass Kirinyaga Road going towards Moy Avenue. Not quite sure what's causing that this morning, but it's pretty messy. Off the thicker superhighway, traffic has come to an end. Ngong Road, as you enter to uh, the city, also some Landis Road, very busy from that junction, coming in from Lusaka Jogo Road, out towards Kamkunji, and then Haile Selassie. That's pretty much about the worst of it this morning. Also looking at still some traffic on the loop around um, North Airport Road heading towards Outer Ring. That to be watched as well. We'll talk Spice FM on X through the morning. One oh two point five Spice FM Kisumu Mature Intelligent Talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 Spice FM, Nairobi. Out clearly for everybody to see, okay? Hmm. Bridges that were weak, being swept off, roads that are incomplete now, ending up with people just driving into ditches. Why would people be driving into ditches? Is because road plus ditch. It's one. Same level. <laughs> it's one. <laughs> nothing. No guardrails, nothing like that. And that's why, so it drains and there's a bit of water, you cannot see where the road is. Well, still, as vehicles traverse that road, mm. what becomes a ditch eventually becomes a crater. Yep. It just dug more and more and more. Mm. Water comes, sweeps what is loose, okay? Vehicles come, losing more. So that process continues. Yeah, because what we see, we saw very many videos and clips and photos of this over the weekend, right? Yes. Roads where basically just vehicles have tipped over, even in Kitengela. Vehicles have just, you do not know where the road ends. <laughs> and it is not your small vehicle, the doo-doo. Yeah. It is big matatu. Yeah. Don't know where the road ends. So you just find yourself on the edge of the road. Edge of the road is the drainage. You get into that ditch. My drainage is deep. It's very deep. Mm. So what is it that's happening anyway? Some roads that are complete, but they don't have the necessary uh, amenities. Other roads that are completely incomplete that don't have nothing. This example of Enterprise Road is completely annoying, by the way, mm. because we are talking about 15 years of road construction going on. So they've done the interchange uh, with uh, Lusaka Road. They've done all those things, but they've left a huge part of the road, a section of the road undone with a caterpillar in the middle of the road. And you ask yourself, so what's going on here? And the same, same company that was involved with Enterprise Road, I think, was also involved in another road called Parklands Ring Road. That also took another more than 10 years to complete. Oh, you know, there's a slum in between called Deep Sea. You know, we need people to move. You know, we need... Da, da, da. Oh, CG, we need to do this and the other. It took forever. But Enterprise doesn't have a slum in the middle of the road. No, it doesn't. So why is it not complete? This is a question. Go as on. the Kenya Urban Roads Authority, it's the same one that's in charge of Ngong Road. Yeah. Ngong Road still... Part of it incomplete. The section after Lenana going all the way towards Karen, 
it's an up and down that thing. Incompleteness caused the death mm. of a young Kenyan. Mm. Yep, and not one. Yes. There were several deaths on that road. Yes, because of the state of that road, the number of people that have died on the Rironi uh, road, many because of the status of construction going on the number of people who are inconvenienced and those who have died on the section between just the kitengala junction and the machakos junction dueling of a road just takes forever street foot bridge was supposed to be done at daystar no foot bridge it's structures done foot bridge was supposed to be done before as river before crystal river or small not done and you ask yourself Ninini. Mm, that ninini, that, that thing. Because Is if you go to the budget, you'll find it. Mm -hmm. It was there in the budget. If you go to the Kenya Roads Board uh, website and you look at the projects that are ongoing, you'll find that particular road. And if you, look, if you look at the road design, you'll be amazed at the things on that design, yeah. which you do not see in reality. Right. But what happens to a man or a woman when you have been given guardianship over a project in the name of the contractor or the site engineer or whatever it is what happens that at some point you either abandon the project or you decide not to do it right because you want to be able to eat a little bit off the top what happens what happens if it was a little bit then those roads would be complete uh, it's never it's not a little bit it's never a little it's usually bit. the amount of the project it's never a little this is bit yes Mm. And Almost, the they're of, eating everything. And the number of people who want to be included in it. The person who bears the brand of it is a contractor, but they get to a point where they don't even know what to do. Because there are people who give you the job. Then there are the supervisory agents like Ken Hub, blah, 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 blah. Mm. Now you think it's Ken who gives you the job. No, they, they don't. They, then they receive instructions as to who should get that job. Mm. So when that person gets that job, what is it demanded of them? Guarantees that that road cannot be completed. Something as simple as marking the road yep. so that at night you can see it. It is. <laughs> yeah, marking the road so mm -hmm. that you can know that you're in the middle of the road, you're on the side of the road. There's a specific paint that I'm told is mixed with crushed glass mm -hmm. that sort of like reflects. Yes. Mm -hmm. it, when you find a road that has been built without, my friend, at night, it is beautiful. You know exactly you where, you where you are. You can see where you are. You see. Mm -hmm. When it isn't there and it rains. God's honest truth. <laughs> It is a nightmare. You don't know whether you're in the middle of the road, you're on the side of the road, you're on a crevice. You don't know. Mm. You honestly don't know. Because even, even if you have a spotlight, you can't see. And you know, the tarmac is black. Mm. And then it's dark. And then it's double black. So my question huh? is, what happens when these things, in the design of the entire thing, these things are there? Are yes, they, they are. What Amazingly so. What happens when by it's not completed? Okay, maybe, maybe the release of money, maybe the release of money, I can understand that as a reason as to why we didn't finish because, hey man, they were supposed to pay, they didn't pay, so we had to pack up our things and go, mm. right? Maybe I can understand that. But even for those that have been completed, what happens when you decide just not to do it right? What I mean? Do. Huh? Okay, like They're now, remember I told you guys about the road to my place and I was mm. just shouting and jubilating. Forever. Hey, I mm -hmm. shouted, I jubilated. Omar. Will you believe do. me if I tell you that there are two craters the size of... No, those are lakes. This one is what? Which crater is it? Which one? Here in... As crater, to, crater Enterprise. No. Which one? Longonot. Thank you. Mm. Like Longonot. <laughs> <laughs> Less do. than six months after the completion of the road. So, I mean... Mm. Do the, the, the details that you have in the planning is so that you can cost it right. Okay? And it is costed appropriately. Yeah. Okay. And I'm certain that even the incidentals and the miscellaneous are added. Yep. Okay? And yet we still can't complete the road. Meaning it is budgeted for yep. so that even the thieving Kenyans who are involved in it are included in the budget. Then, okay, they've already chopped the money. Yes. Why wouldn't they just finish the no, thing? That's want, my question. That, that, that's I don't, it's very painful. You, I don't, I mean, you I seem have... to think that these are people who want to nibble. <laughs> these <laughs> people want to, to gobble. And the, the, the difference. Nibble is you touch, touch, these ones, you want to swallow, almost swallow it whole. So there's a problem. There is no way, and you're right when you say it will not be completed. You know, let's look at, let's look at, at the structure of many of the companies that are doing roads in the country. Okay? Just doing infrastructure projects. So the big project, you can clearly see that this big project has, is being done by a company that has experience, right? Mm -hmm. 
And that's why you'll see many of them now going to these foreign companies. So this company has experience, has this and the other, has the wherewithal to actually do a, take up a big project. And if you talk, and I, I agree with what you're saying, City, because I've had a conversation with several engineers at Kenha and Kura and such, and they'll tell you, because that the engineer at Kenha is the one who will design this road. Yes. Mm. They will actually design the road. They'll look at, so at this particular point, we need a bridge. At this particular point, we need to elevate the road. At this particular point, we may need a viaduct. At this point, we need now foot bridges. We need a we bus need, stop. We need a bus stop mm. here. We need, that thing is done. Design number one, it has it. Cost it. Cost it, it comes to X, 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 X billion shillings. I told boss, X, 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 X billion. Not her. <laughs> <laughs> this one where shall we get the money to do it so what is the best that we can do with it so engineer goes back and starts saying okay so what i can do is maybe i can reduce a, this this here uh this this bridge is important so the bridge stays um this number of lanes here had increased i'd included a service lane so maybe i can remove the service lane and then have an exit here and then the, so they reduce the design cost it okay now it's doable then we go to tender on this particular new new design the company that's given the job to do this comes and pitches for this particular design and says for this i can do it with this amount of money lowest bidder wins takes it higher you're supposed to be funded from the exchequer it shall be milestone funding do a b c d come we certify we go next tranche next like that like that now that's where the stupidity begins because this guy by the time he was winning this tender there are people who were there sharks were just telling and telling him <laughs> you know i want you to win this con this tender mm -hmm. i can tell you the next the best guy for this job who is not cutting corners is quoting <laughs> this much so you quote x below so that you can win it so mm. you quote x below so i can win so you quote x below so you can win and the person has already told you because i've given you this information because i'm giving you the job this is what i want from it already so by the time this guy is rolling on the ground he's already decided i am going to cut back on some several issues so finds engineer on the road engineer contract has already been awarded mm. you are the supervising engineer contract has been awarded to this guy contractor comes and tells you boss the only thing i can afford to do with this kind of uh, money. money now is this I, I i cannot do the shoulder of the road that you wanted me to do the shoulder of the road okay <laughs> i i'm going to use this less quality for the shoulder because look at the money that i have mm. now you are the engineer so what do you do and you're being told where when you miss for me a ikazi now if we don't get a road you're the one who's going to be sacked why why is the contractor not finishing the road so you find that there are so many competing interests in the completion of one road but it's all known from the top the problem with this road was not the design it was with the implementation right and we do not do anything about it it's impunity upon impunity upon impunity. That's it. Impunity is making people die on our roads. Impunity is making helicopters fall off the sky. Impunity mm -hmm. is causing all these things. And we all know. We know. Everybody knows. Yes. It's impunity. Yeah. It's not, it's not about None of us right. appears yeah. to be wanting to do anything about it. No. You remember the tragedy of the Nzui Bridge? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. You know, that one takes a cup. Just the length of time that bridge was built, money which was allocated for it to be completed and then allocated again yeah. and then allocated. Now, you'd think at some point it was done. We have that tragedy. We all witnessed it. It was filmed. Mm. How the bus was taken. Mm. More money was allocated. Has that bridge been completed? <laughs> <laughs> now, now you see, you... Uh, uh, this laughter is not out of mirth. This mm. is a coping mechanism. Mm. How on earth do we put up with such such tragedies? And then how on earth do we put up with leaders who actually oversee these things? Yeah. How? Because, see, the, the rains are with us. Yeah. Okay, let's sit back and see. You know, we've had bridges swept away. Swept. Yeah. With, with raging floods. Yeah. And these waters that we're not talking about, these are special. These are heavy. Yeah. These are not these joker type rains where it just drizzles a little bit rains kidogo no no they are coming in torrents i think 
and maybe it ties into some thought I've been having. We have a big problem which emanates from the fact that we have all together collectively politicized public service. Yes. Because of politicizing public service, then those who work in public service feel that they cannot do their job. If a political figure, if the political appointee comes and says this is the way to go, you only do it that way. You, many in the public service will tell you, I mean, uh, we have tried telling them but this is what they want to do. So, so many in public service feel helpless. Even those that know the right thing to do, they know what to do, but they feel helpless because we have completely and totally politicized our public service. Eric, you are right. For you to get appointment into the Kenya National Highways Authority, it's a political <laughs> appointment as the boss. For you to rise up the ranks, then you've got to know how you're aligned to the political appointee of the day. For you to rise up the ranks of the roads authorities. For you to rise up the ranks of the Kenya Roads Board. For you to rise up the ranks in the Ministry of Roads and supervising all these things. You know there's politics more than merit. Even though the president was talking about merit yesterday, it's mm. not happening in our public service. It isn't. A principal secretary is appointed on political consideration, not necessarily on merit. Those that have worked in public service for many years that deserve to get to that level where they can be principal secretaries do not get there. No, they don't. Unless you lick somebody's whatever, mm. you will not get up there. Mm. And sometimes even when you do. Even sometimes when you do, you lick the wrong guy. <laughs> that guy goes. <laughs> you don't get the job. We must depoliticize public service. We must start by saying, for example, PSS should rise up the ranks of public service. Yes. And should have sufficient power to actually tell the minister, no, Mr. Minister, this is not how we do things. There's a very good reason why PSs were made accounting officers. There yes. was a very good reason why. That's why they were called permanent. You know why? It was known that irrespective of which government came in place, this individual would still be there to carry on with the government services. Yep. It didn't matter. And they are not political at all. No. They are doing the right thing. This, I am PS for roads. I am PS for roads because I understand what roads is. I understand how government functions. I understand how the government works. I know if we put this is a project, I will only be referring to, so what do we have? This is the policy. This is the law. This is the program. Is it budgeted for? Yes. Is the budgeted? Have you ticked the boxes? Then I will sign off the money. Mm. But now, that's not what we see. But you know, I yeah. was brought into this office so that we, this government, we have to do this, we have to do the roads, we have to do I mean, 100,000 roads. When you make a pesa, you make a pesa, you pesa, and you make a pesa, and you You know, the, if you think about it, huh, mm -hmm. there is an element that is often lost, and this to me is, is a very valuable element. Mm -hmm. When you have people rising up the ranks, the people who work under them, even if they're transferred, they're known. It's yep. the government. People mm. know each other within government. Yep. And they, they know this person can do what they're supposed to do. Yep. We've worked with him. We've seen him over the years. We know this person. Yep. Okay. Now, that guarantees that even the people who work below them will seek to do what needs to be done. Mm. But when it is politicized and someone comes in, and the first thing they do is they reshuffle so many things, you're not really even sure what on earth is going on. Mm. And you know why that is true? And what you're saying as well is that because there are actually... And it's because we, we must disabuse ourselves from the notion that all projects that start end like this. That's not true. Mm. Because there actually are roads that start and are completed yes. and actually function yes. well. Yes. And are 100% according to design. They exist. So they how in the same space can those ones exist? And you also have this debacle also existing in the same space. It is that element of impunity that we talk about that says, well, actually, you know what? We know what's supposed to be done, but we're just going to not do it because, you know, my pocket takes precedence over anything else or my schmoozing with these other people takes precedence over anybody else or anything else. So that's why you can have an A-grade road operating in the same space <laughs> as Uji. <laughs> 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 Wait, 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 wait. You don't do. Mm -hmm. You are right. Mm. Hey. 
to understand it, huh? just look at this Mombasa Road. Eh? Mm. When President Kibaki brought the Chinese to build it, Kenyan contractors have been, had been given this road. Mm. This road, you know what you're saying? The road wasn't moving, mm -mm. in all honesty. Mm. Every time they were supposed to do something, the jams on this road, I, I, I mean, it was unbelievable. Mm. So, the former president, the late former president, brings in these people. Mm. And we started seeing things we had never seen. They were working 24 hours, literally. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Day and night, literally. And when you're told, you know, it's going to be three lanes, you're saying, where's the three lanes going to fit? Oh, the three lanes appeared all right. Yep. And they've been there. Yeah. You know, the damage you see on this road came about when they were building this expressway. Mm. This road was a very, very good road. Then someone decided that they're going to paint the the markers on the roads so that you know the demarcation. All it took was some heavy rain. <laughs> and suddenly you're wondering now, this road. Where was it? Where was it? I, I, and and it, was it really yellow? Was it brown paint that they put on this thing here? Mm. Now, the moment that becomes a norm where you have a situation where shoddy workmanship a complete total absence of accountability then the issues of even death become an issue that isn't of great concern no that you're talking about people are dying because of these the consequences when the consequences hit home it isn't uh, and you know it's not an issue because you don't hear of prosecutions mm. you don't hear of people being held to account mm. so at some point i think the citizens really give up they say mm. you know something nothing's going to happen yeah and why when we've had cases where you think accountability ought to be brought to the fore and you've had people risking their necks and whistleblowing, God Almighty, the thing that happened to whistleblowers in this country, mm. you look once and realize, I'm never blowing any whistle. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, Even I the whistle have, that I have, I've I broken don't have it. A mouth. In fact, Which, what? what? Shut, shut, How shut. do they blow whistle? Yeah, shut, shut. Me? Mm -mm, mm -mm. Did you see it? No. <laughs> but you're standing but in shock? No, no, no. But the place I'm know? standing is not. Is, uh, uh, no. I was not there. completely no. Mm. The other contractor, how can I possibly know the contractor? <laughs> but he came to your office. I wasn't there on that day. <laughs> <laughs> now, people get into defense mode, and all you do is you figure, you know something? Somewhere along the line, I'm going to be blamed for this thing, yeah? So why don't I just take a slice for myself also? Mm. Yeah. So when I'm blamed, at even, least uh, at least I feel okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. There, there, there's a right to be blamed here. Yeah. I'll be guilty of something. I'll be guilty of something. Oh, but I can be guilty and I did nothing and I've received nothing. Yeah. So I might as well receive something. Yeah. Now, by the time we get to a point where that becomes a norm, the sort of trouble we're in do is explained by the discipline you made. These projects will never be completed. They will not. No, they will not. Mm -hmm. They will not. So they become generational projects. We, yes. have, we have to go back to a public service that serves the public. And the leaders who come in who are elected politically, and those, it's okay for a president to appoint uh, whoever as cabinet secretaries. They'll be vetted for their suitability and all, but they don't have experience in public service. And we shouldn't assume that they do. Nope. You cannot have somebody who has no experience in public service, no experience in how the government functions, coming in and taking up that role of accounting officer for a billions of shillings. For goodness sake. And everybody who works under you, supposedly, knows this work better than you do. Yes. How do you think that thing is going to work out? Uh, they'll sabotage you proper. And you, you, or you sabotage them. Or you sabotage them properly. In just the name of you coming there and you're showing, uh, oh, we know me, I'm the one I'm who the talks one. to the boss. Then you want to make the rest of this whole battalion of people seem incompetent. Yeah. And who's going to suffer because the Because of you. The people you're supposed to serve, they'll get the short end of that stick continuously. Yep. Yep. That's what's going to happen. It is this same, look, we can say whatever you want, but it is this same behavior, and that's what Chris Maura is saying. That's how you get a petrol operator who's then been nominated to be a consular general in another country. Mm. That is how it happens. That is how you see some chick somewhere who doesn't know how to spell engineer, and suddenly she's a contract. She's a contractor for a road something because she knows somebody who knows somebody. Mm. For goodness sake. And those are the things that we see happening today. Yeah. That's what's happening. So once you want to ask yourself, what is the value that you place on life? And I'm not talking about dead. I'm talking about the value that you place on life to live, to operate every day from point A to point B. What does that mean? It means using your infrastructure in the name of roads. It means using your 
public transport system, whatever that may be. It means being able to access one, two, three. It means being able to access your passport at immigration. It means being able to go to a, a, an office and getting something done. That's the value we're talking about. When we, what value do you place on life to be able to live every day? And it is unfortunate, but we can see that the value that you place by the nature of the fact that you're appointing people who don't know their nose from their big toe. <laughs> yeah? That's the kind of value that you're putting. <laughs> big because, toe. Yeah, big toe and nose almost can look the same. They don't know the difference. They all, they all point forward. Then now, eh, they all point forward, my brother. You've said it. <laughs> mm. That is how now when you put people there, that's the kind of value that you place. Until and unless you want to get rid of those two things. You want to get rid of this impunity and bad manners that we talk about. And you want to get rid of this mediocrity when it comes to getting things done. When you decide that you want to get rid of those two things and place proper value on life, I'm telling you, we'll see till things start to change. Until then, Enterprise Road, my dear, is going to remain like Go and swim. Ah. Go and swim on Enterprise Road. You need to move from one end of Enterprise to the other. Swim. That's the only way you'll be. You'll be you'll and, if, and if you can't swim, learn yeah. to swim. Learn. Yeah, yeah. But we'll not stop talking about it. All. You come from any of these other areas, Ju, Dero, Kangemis, Ju, Regen, wherever, wherever, on the road to Nakuru, and you want to cross from one end of the road to the other, fly. <laughs> fly. Because <laughs> there's no pedestrian crossing, and we're not putting one. Why? We don't value you. Uh, how, you how fly. You all right? That's your problem. Shauriako. Or your driving studio and you can't see the end of the road because it's water. Is, then open your it's eyes. It's fine. <laughs> Buy a boat. <laughs> Buy a boat. <laughs> Why are you at home? If you die, we'll send 5,000 shillings to your oh, funeral. If you don't have a boat, sorry. there's a simple solution. Just get out of your car. Swim. Swim or walk <laughs> into the water and know how deep it is and then decide. If mm -hmm. you catch Bill Hartley on the way, that's your problem. Well, thank you for tuning in to the Situation Room today. You have yourselves a lovely day, hoping that you can stay safe in this bad weather. I will not be in tomorrow. So there's um, a conference on e-mobility by Kenya Power. And then on Wednesday, there's another, the American Chamber Business Summit. The, it's going to be taking place. So I'll be in those two meetings. But Ndu and City will be here. Senor, mm -hmm. conversations continue. Have a lovely one. It's coming up to 10 a.m. Good morning.